Right. So, 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 guys. Uh, first and foremost, uh, welcome to to our first uh uh battle royal. Uh, I I wanted to uh do a area plus property punya comparison. Uh, for multiple reason. Uh, I think if we can move to the next slide, I'll be right. Uh, and before that, I think we can basically invite the panelists uh for tonight to the ring. So yeah. uh, we we bring William. Uh, William basically uh is a former real estate agent. Uh, and he will be basically sharing his POV on the property. Uh, in that area today, from a from a uh one checkup real estate agent punya POV. Which one is the easiest to sell? Which one is the most difficult to sell? So we have quite a diverse near panelists lah malam ni. So the whole purpose of this is basically to give you guys some level of a uh, real life punya information dengan data. So you can see Zakri here. Uh, for those who are far capital clients, I think you are familiar, right? Uh, Zakri is a uh, present uh, project new details, right? So Zakri basically uh, is part of our research team. So malam ni kita ada dua wakil uh, from our research team dekat far capital to share their insights. And their POV, Zakri also will be doing the presentation with regards to Maluri dengan Cochrane punya area. And then we've got the fourth uh, panelist tonight. LB is part of our research team. LB has been doing the research with regards of the rental yield, what is the median price point in the area. Uh, both, uh, I guess, William, Zakri, LB and myself all have visited all of the property yang kita uh, basically akan basically Lawan, lawan and laga kan tonight, right? So the properties that are available tonight, we've seen them. So basically, I think we have got a good grasp in terms of, uh, you know, um, where the property stands and where the property performs. Uh. Now, so I'm going to invite my fifth panelist for tonight, right? Which, Which is Shane. Shane, right? So Shane here is from Vitopia. Uh, he's currently the acting CEO of Vitopia. So uh, um, Vitopia today operates in a couple of the buildings within the Maluri and Cochrane punya belt. So Shane will be able to go and share from a co-living punya point of view, room rental punya point of view, uh, where the demand is going to come from. Okay. And then we've got our final panelist, right? So Keith is from Belief, right? The new co-living startup, right? AI co-living startup. So Keith, uh, similar to Shane, has got a background of basically doing room rental and co-living. So basically tonight, you're going to be listening about this area from multiple perspectives. Full rental macam mana, Airbnb macam mana, co-living macam mana, regular rental agency macam mana, demand for subsale macam mana. So you're just not going to hear from me lah guys. So it's quite pointless, right? You guys are bored, right? Dah boring dah tengok muka mamat ni, right? So today I bring extra firepower, ah, uh, you know? extra firepower, right? So uh, we'll have a very interesting, uh, very, very uh, 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 on check up, uh, interesting discussion tonight. Um, and I guess... um. Uh, I, I expect a lot of hate uh, coming out of this content uh, because you know for those who because we're going to rank the property right so 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 which one is going to be the best property we recommend for old stay which one we're going to be the best property we recommend for tenant which one is going to be the best property we recommend for investment right so normally uh, the people who bought the best one happy yeah right they'll be celebrating right and the people who accidentally bought the lousy ones the bottom ranking one will probably hate us, you know, Pluala, Faizul, Scam and apa semua tu. Um, you know, you can please, you know, feel free. Rather than telling, you know, people Scam and apa semua tu, feel free to come out your own content video, right? And, and uh, but the whole idea of tonight is to basically use data, right? And real market intelligence to provide you some level of, yeah. So fair, guys. As you know, Far Capital, we always talk data. We always talk about real insights. You know, we don't mix it up. So I'm hoping that this uh, content tonight will give a lot of insight for people who are looking to stay, rent, buy, or invest in the Maluri Cochrane area. So I'm hoping that this video is the only video you need to watch in order to decide what to buy, what to avoid. At least for now. Lah. So uh, moving on, uh, LB, if you can share the screen and, and, and kick everyone out because, you know, uh, you know, we need to show the screen now, right? So, uh, some context uh, why we are doing this. Uh, I think today there's a lack of uh, data uh, today, uh, real data, real review uh, to provide independent guide for anyone looking to buy property in any area. So, which is why we are doing area battle royal and then we compare property. Okay. So, so that's the first reason, right? Why, why, why we are doing this. Number two here is that we want to provide full information so that you can get the full point of view, right? So, like I said, we bring co-living operator, room rental operator, we bring 
agent right and then we talk about the data and the number of rental year we talk about Airbnb cash flow so the moment you understand that it becomes very clear what to buy what to afford right okay then uh, the third one is to provide shortcut for people who are looking at properties today in this area uh, fourth is to provide uh, to guide tenants and future buyers also in terms of what property they should be looking at and last but not least uh, I think after uh, the presentation tonight you'll be able to see very clearly when you use data, okay, it can help avoid very expensive mistake in terms of buying the wrong property. Because like I said, tonight we're going to rank the property. So they're going to be winners and they're going to be losers, right? And the losers are going to behave like a loser juga, for sure. They're going to be very, very pissed. And they say, oh, these guys are buyers and a personal too. For me, no problem. Add you the data. Show me the proof that your property rental is the best is better than what we presented tonight okay otherwise you know uh do better lah next time buy better lah, right so 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 that's the first reason right it's a, as a guide so anyone looking at this from a very independent pov will love what we do the only people who will hate what we do tonight is people who are trying to sell shit properties in the area number one or people who own shit properties in this area sorry so let's be very candid and direct huh? because we don't want to do content that is uh, wasting time after you watch 20, 30 minutes, one hour, you still, uh, actually, I don't know what I watch, right? Doesn't help me in making any buying decision. Fair, guys. I don't want to waste anyone's time. So when you watch a video coming up from us, you know it is going to be good. It's going to be data driven, right? It's going to use real case study. That's it, right? We are very unemotional about it. Okay, cool, yeah, guys. That's the objective, right? Why we are doing this, right? So, so, so please don't take it personally if you have bought the wrong property. It is not meant to go and say you suck. No, I'm trying to get people who are trying to buy property in this area, trying to rent property in this area. Right? That's it. Okay? What can you expect to learn today? A lot, right? So, number one, you're going to learn the details about the area of Maluri and Cochrane. Okay? Number two, you get to understand why people like this area or why people don't like this area. Okay? Number three, what future things or booster that will happen in this area that will help either increase or even potentially decrease the value of the property so you want to know right before if you own a property today here you want to know what's coming into the area so that you can decide do i sell or do i keep the property right okay number four why we like seven criteria and how we use it to navigate which property to buy because let's face it there's a lot of property in this area not everything is good so how do you use seven criteria to navigate which one is a good buy, which one is a lousy buy, right? Number five. Uh, now, like I said, you get to the summary shortcut. Best property for own stay. So for own stay, which property that we think, right, is going to be the best one, right? Number six, you're going to know which best property for tenant and for rental. So people who are tenant looking into this area, then you get to understand which property is the best, okay? Now, number, number, number seven is that which property, right, uh, uh, which is going to be the best for investment. So, you're going to know which best property for own stay, for a tenant point of view, which property for, for you to go and rent and stay from, right? which one is the most value for money, right? And for the investors looking at this area, which best property for, own, for, for, for investment, okay? And then, what's next for this area? So, I'm going to share some gossip right so 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 that'll be interesting right uh for this area and last but not least then we're going to go to if we have time we're going to go to q a right? if there's any question for us lah, eh? you know majority orang biasanya datang ni dia bukan nak tanya tanya sangat so 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 you know if you can uh have any questions related to the content tonight please put it in the q a right please put it in the q a okay so that we can basically answer question one by one is that okay guys right so and the best part about this is that we, we i think we've, we've done close to about a month of research uh for this particular content we think it's going to be good it's going to be a nice guide it's going to be a shortcut for everyone looking at this area so today whether you are owner you are an agent right you are tenant you are looking to invest in the area right this is definitely a must watch video right so that it gives you within a less than one hour full insight about the area Okay, are you guys excited or not, guys? Penat ni, kita buat kerja ni, ni. Right? To, to go and put this and then, you know, uh, we, should, we should sell this content. Lah. But then again, never mind. It's fine. Okay. 
So, are you guys excited? Without further ado, the the first uh, presenter for tonight will be Zach, right? Uh, so Zach will be talking about the KLCC, the 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 area itself, a description about the area, and then after that will be LP, and then I go back to the investment bit, uh, you know, and the rest. So with that, Zachary, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. Okay, um, I hope everyone can hear my voice clearly. Uh, first of all, hello everybody. Um, Zakri here. Uh, I assume many of you first time seeing me here. So again, Zakri here. Uh, I do research and share insights on property mainly for investment, right? So um, very excited tonight. Um, uh, really excited to share more insights about Maluri and those neighborhoods there in Maluri. And we are also excited to know on your side uh, on what do you think about what's the best uh, property in Maluri, right? So yeah, we start here. Um, where's Maluri, right? Um, Maluri address in the proper Kuala Lumpur. So for today's context, we are talking about those areas in Chiras, especially in Maluri, and those nearby Maluri like Tama Pertama and those comparable developments only, lah, right? So this roughly where Maluri located. Uh, so we point here on the southeast part of Kuala Lumpur, uh, near to one of the latest mega master plan in Kuala Lumpur, which is uh, TRX, lah, Ton Raza Exchange. About 3 km, 3 km away, uh, and about 2 MRT stations away, saja daripada Maluri to TRX. And next one adalah Merdeka 118 for another landmark about 5 km distance and about 5 uh, MRT stations away from Maluri. And last but not least, uh, on the northern part, here is the KLCC, lah, about 5 km distance and about 4 stations away from Maluri, right? So technically, we can say Maluri is the nearest uh, residential option to those uh, city centres like KLCC, Bukit Bintang, TRX, right? Maluri is just about uh, 3 km away saja from uh, the closest offices uh, commercial in the city. Selain daripada yang macam those area in Nampang, other area in Ceras, Sungai Besi, etc. Right? So Maluri antara yang paling dekat lah dengan uh, KL City Centre and disebabkan uh, lokasi because of the location that super duper good. We're going to go through more uh, on insight later right? on how is the market doing as in the rental and also buy and sell market. Lah, right? So next. Here's the route of MRT Laluan Kajang Line, lah, which is the MRT stations nearby this area, Maluri and Kokrin, which walking to the properties like web that we, we are about to talk later, right? So um where we circle these two MRT stations, one obviously uh MRT Maluri itself, and the other one is MRT Kokrin. So you can see here, right, at least about one to two stations away sahaja, ke TRX stations lah. So, um, why these MRT stations is really important, right? The M uh, TRX stations. So, this is the busiest um, MRT interchange even after less than one year operation. So, this is the interchange of MRT 1, uh, the Kajang line, and MRT 2, lah, uh, the Putrajaya line, right? Which apart from uh, TRX itself, that offering more than... 50,000 50, high paying job supply one is completed, right? MRT Putrajaya line will also bring you to more and more important hotspots, right? Such as Persiaran KLCC, which one of the, which more and more job supply in the area. Lah. Okay, uh, next. is the latest by December last year, more or less data of people commute by using LRT and M LRT MRT monorail in the last year. On daily usage is about up to 830,000 passengers in one day, 830,000 passengers in one day, which reflect to overall passenger about um, 1.1 million commuters, including the buses and trains. Lah, right? So again, why this really important is that in Maluri, we can see most of the developments, whether it's TOD or non-TOD, it's still within the coverage of uh, walking distance to MRT stations and also to the mall. So right here, saying that the demand for people to choose to stay in Maluri, either rental or own stay, it does impact it by the MRT demand sprawl. Plus, the location itself is super duper premium and close to the city centre, right? 
So, uh, so here is a part of existing um, TRX and Metropolis in Bangsa South. All right. Um, uh, apart from uh, TRX, existing TRX, existing KL Central and ongoing KL Metropolis in Bangsa South, uh, I'll be next. So we point uh, out here these two upcoming mega developments, which is Bandar Malaysia and also TRX2. Why again we relate these mega developments to the area of Maluri, which one of the connectivity, which location wise is situated nearby within tiga kelima uh, kilometer radius lah from Maluri. And second is the accessibility, where you are looking at demand sprawl from those mega developments due to the job supply where these two mega developments are also located uh, and also facilitate uh, with uh, MRT stations, lah, right? So uh, next, LB. I think I, I want to chip in a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, from Zachary's point. Yeah. Uh, can you guys see me? Uh, yeah. If you can go back to the slides just now, Tadi. Now, I think... Um, um, Number one here is that you've got people often forgotten. Eh? Yeah, TRX are the dual portion. So there's a first portion which is largely almost completed. And then the second part of TRX, which is actually nearer towards the Pudu side, nearer towards the Cochrane Punya side, right? Which is the southern part, lah, basically, under TRX too. Right? So that one is undergoing, right? Now, then I think people will be arguing, hey, Bandar Malaysia is actually quite far away from Maluri, right? What the hell are you guys talking about Bandar Malaysia as a possible booster for Maluri? Right? And the reality here is that what is interesting as of today, and you're going to be, be able to go and listen to this feedback directly from the operators themselves. Right? People who are currently, for example, I, I don't know whether you are familiar dengan Sungai Besi area, Chan Saudi area, guys. Are you guys familiar with Sungai Besi, Chan Saudi punya area? Now, there's a bunch of property there. You will find out that the demand, right, for property in Maluri is actually a lot higher compared to, for example, the demand for properties dekat Sungai Besi. Even, for example, you guys are familiar dengan RC residence, right? Mm. Familiar tak dengan RC, right? So, guys, RC is opposite of Bandar Malaysia. Betul lah. But, later, you're going to look at the data, you're going to listen to the operator themselves. What is the rental demand dekat sana? And I don't know whether you guys know about this particular project called Tryon. Pernah dengar ke guys, Tryon? Baru VP, project cantik, right? So, so pretty cool uh, looking developments, right? When you look at a lot of advertisement from Tryon, for example, right? And the main attraction they check up in the first couple of selling points of Tryon, to sell Tryon, they will say, this is 3 kilometers to Sunway Velocity, this is 3 kilometers to Ikea. So, here's the best part. You are buying something more expensive outside of Maluri area. For them to say, hey, Maluri is cool. Wow. You know, Sabi Velocity and Ikea is cool and we're just three kilometers away. And, and you're not necessarily buying this area at a discount. So, which is why we think eventually when Bandar Malaysia is going to be announced by end of this year and there's going to be at least 5,000 to 10,000 jobs going to be created yeah, from the construction of Bandar Malaysia because it's a bloody massive project. Now, majority of them would have a preference to stay dekat Maluri compared to, for example, Razak City ke, compared to even, for example, the one in you can find kat Chan Sauli and apa semua tu. Look, again, this is actually from what the tenant today are basically saying. Okay, you're going to listen from the operators themselves and nanti, once you hear the occupancy rate yang ada in this building tu, I think you begin to understand kenapa. So, remember guys, when you look at iklan from Tryon and for example, all these other development like one uh, residency and, and, and RC, they often use, eh? yeah, they often use how far is it to Sunway Velocity? How far is it to Ikea? Which we, we have lah kat sini kan? So, my whole point here is that why would anyone want to stay in this area for the same price point Right, if Maluri Cochrane is available at the same price, okay, so yeah, uh, please continue, Zakri. You believe Sungai Besi, but you talk about something good in Maluri, right? So, 
I think that's very Betul. interesting. Yeah. So, uh, people always go and people always go and consider that micro location punya consideration when people buy property because of what is that location offering lah. So, uh, th- that is very interesting. We just found out uh, about few days ago uh, about that. Technically, people who are selling property in Sungai Besi, Sungai Besi is actually talking something go about Maluri lah, right? So, uh, it's okay. Uh, kita continue dulu, right? Thank you, Alvi. Uh, so, here a little bit about Bandar Malaysia, right? It's a, it's a major uh, urban development project in Kuala Lumpur, which formerly uh, location dia adalah Royal Malaysian Air Force. Uh, based in Sungai Besi lah, those yang opposite dengan uh, RC, uh, Razak City punya, Razak, Resi- Razak City Residence lah, right? Um, so, uh, the total size of about uh, more than 400 acres, about 480 acres, is one of the largest uh, urban developments projects in Malaysia, which aiming to transform the area into a world-class punya urban district, right? Where components will be about uh, mixed-use development, including residential, commercial and retail spaces, right? Um, not only that, uh, Bandar Malaysia looking at to be the world-class integrated transportation hub, which as of today, there are already uh, two block MRT stations under MRT two line, which one of this, uh, which uh, one of it adalah north and one of it adalah south uh, stations of Bandar Malaysia. Lah. So there are two station, dedicated stations in Bandar Malaysia itself, lah. confirm one, right? And next is one of the stop of uh, high speed rail, HSR at Bandar Malaysia, as well as uh, KTM, KLIA Transit, the ERL, and uh, last but not least is the East Coast Rail uh, Link, ECRL, right? So very excited here because they are looking at more than uh, 10,000 high paying job supply once a master plan of Bandar Malaysia completed, right? Right. So here, um, first of all, kenapa kita cakap Maluri antara best location location to consider to buy for own steel, to buy for investment, or as tenant to rent unit here, right? To enjoy the convenience, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because, right? So here we put some compar- comparable, right? Um, the cut Sungai Besi, Chow Sam Lim. We believe most of people here is super family with KL, uh, especially those famous spots like Sungai Besi. Uh, Maluri and apa semua lah, right? So why we put this one? The situation as of today in Sungai Besi, uh, looking um, a bit off compared to Maluri, right? So where you can see the price, yes, from 500 ringgit PSF up until close to 800 ringgit PSF lah. Um, where in Maluri there is development super new, uh, higher spec for facilities from your point of view, big pools, uh, swim pools. Nicer view, uh, then the most important thing adalah more convenience lah, which accessible and walkable through MRT and also near to KL City Centre in Maluri, right? So here adalah salah satunya adalah one of the highest plot density, close to 6,000 of total units in Sungai Besi, in Razak City, which is RC residence, right? Which price about close to 500 ringgit PSF, and the rental as of today, like certainly bad where the rental as low as actually 1005 up to 2004 lah. Uh, if people uh, if you can check from property guru those non fully furnished mini rental is actually as low as 1002 1003 for two bedder in Kuala Lumpur in Sungai Besi in Razak City so it's um, we can see certainly bad for a rental from your point of view where you are actually buying something actually close to those in those good properties in Maluri so we're going to share it later right So next is Tryon, just completed about 1,003 units, 1,300 units um, and one of the highest price uh, which is up close to uh, 800 ringgit PSF and the rental is certainly slightly lower compared to those in Maluri as well. And one more uh, latest development with penthouses on top of the building, uh, total of 680 units adalah one residence, right? Uh, this one asking about 600 plus up to close to 700 ringgit right and the rental is also quite low even this is quite a walking distance to MRT Chan Saolin under MRT 2 punya uh, stations right okay uh, so we are here at the most exciting part property mana yang kita akan laga-laga kan ha, buat kata Faizal tadi 
Profit Money yang akan menang ranking, who's gonna win, who's gonna lose, right? So here we have one of one of the famous completed one is one Cochrane. Next is V Resident Two, Una Service Apartment. We have M Vertica, Park Three, and last but not least, La Ville. So these are all selected due to it's comparable, especially to due to spec punya POV, micro location punya POV, distance to mall and distance to MRT and etc. So we're gonna go through in detail after this, right? Um, next, all right. And before we go through one by one later after this, uh, we are doing some grading. So here is the grading for facilities lah on how we think which development has got the best facilities. The completed one is the most premium one which one is the normal or basic which one are young uh, which one has got the basic facilities or worst facilities in the area lah, right so he, here we grade grade a as the super complete looks luxury looks most premium in the area which one of the best uh, facilities uh, provided uh, built in the area of maluri uh, under all the comparable developments just now Right and grade B we grade based on the above average or normal punya facilities which going to grade A but not yet since ada yang since ada yang provide even better facilities compared to those yang kita grade as grade B lah right and grade C based on the normal facilities D is super basic and E is worst grading lah right so okay so we have here a uh, rank of the facilities and fasad yang kita dah tolong uh, uh, apa rank kan right so maybe lepas ni we gonna have lb to go one by one on every aspect and uh, we're gonna go through the price yield together with the spec facade location to the apa uh, to the mall mrt and apa semua one by one uh, property by property punya point of view lah right so here we already rank for you guys the best facilities and facade punya spec specification right so we grade here one two and three for M Vertica, Park 3 and 1 Cochrane. Out of 6, which number 4 is Laville, number 5 is V Residence 2, number 6 is Una. And why we put M Vertica as grade A punya best facilities and facade punya specifications, right? So first thing first, M Vertica has got the biggest facilities, uh, apa? the biggest facility size and the highest and the premium and the most complete facilities in town, right? They have got the at least about 38 facilities, uh, type of facilities on top of the 4.5 acres of size of the facilities sahaja. So, untuk facilities sahaja, bersaiz 4.5 acre. With the two infinity uh, Olympic size pool that facing skyscrapers in KLCC, right? They have got the karaoke, two karaoke rooms, they got a cinema room. They have got the very big gym, about four thousand plus square feet in size, with the high tech punya uh, apa, uh, device. They are using um technology with the touch screen and high technology punya uh, features lah, right? And many many more lah, right? So we great and Vertica is the best facilities in this area with those out of six developments that we compare lah, right? Followed by Park 3. So can see on the right side is the Park 3 punya uh, facilities from outside. We grade as grade B. Okay. Park 3 has got one of the premium uh, and uh, most conceptual punya facilities. Yet, uh, and Vertica has got better, better and most complete punya facilities in comparison to Park 3. If tak ada and Vertica, Park 3 will be number one lah. Right. So we put number two because of the number of facilities is lesser compared to and Vertica. And the uh, upper, uh, the um, the special special facilities, uh, macam karaoke, cinema, and apa semua tak ada dekat part three lah, right? So part three has got the normal punya facilities, but it looks premium, very solid, and very nice in landscape punya point of view lah, right? That's why we put as number two and we grade as grade B lah, right? And the third one is one Cochrane, one of the latest completed property located just next to my town or Ikea. Uh, Cheras, right? And it is located bersebelahan sahaja dengan MRT One Cochrane. Walking distance about 300 ke 350 meters sahaja, which is really, really close, right? And we spec this one as grade B, we grade this one as grade B and put it as uh, rank number three due to the facilities is very spacious, right? Even though the facilities is 
normal in comparison to M Vertica, but it is better compared to those three dekat bawah tu lah, Lavi, V Resident 2 and Una, right? And the specifications is actually uh, quite premium and the uh, area of facilities is quite spacious. Uh, it's like a resort uh, feeling when you go to the facilities area lah, right? And the most exciting, exciting part for this one is the best and most HD view uh, daripada facilities ke TRX punya view lah. So you can see on number 3 punya uh, photo dekat bawah tu adalah uh, the view from swimming pool to TRX punya location lah. So it's really really close, really really clear and you feel very premium since you are, uh, since the facilities is uh, technically um, is a resort alike lah, right? And Laville V residents still we great as great B but uh, because of number two and number three has got the better facilities that's why we put this at number four and five lah. and number six una has come with a uh, good concept of facade and concept uh, of the building design yet uh, the facilities type is quite basic and the number of facilities is lesser compared to those uh, comparables lah. right and that's why we put uh, it at number six i think just to clarify guys uh i think there's a typo I think for this ranking is largely talking about facilities. So, so I think we exclude facade. Nanti in the next slide too, you'll be able to go and see for each development too, how do we rank the facade and then the facilities. We've got an individual ranking, right? So yeah. there's just no way M Vertica should be ranked number one from a facade point of view, right? Yeah. Uh, no way, right? So, so, so I apologize for the typo. Uh, but this is basically purely ranking from a facilities point of view. Yeah. Okay, and there are two ways we, we grade the facilities. Number one is the number of facilities and the quality of the facilities and the overall view that you can get from the facilities. Mm. So what does this mean, right? So for example, there's no point having a KLCC view if only certain units here can see KLCC view, right? So we cannot call the development with KLCC view. But if the facility at the KLCC view or the TRS view, right? Then... Uh, then you can argue that the development has got a better view. So, so, so this is purely from a ranking of facilities plus basically the view lah from the facility area itself. Mm. Okay. So just to clarify lah, apologies guys for the typo. I'm so sorry. It's the first time that we do this. Uh, but uh, you know we're gonna do better. Uh, but uh, you know uh, I I I thought that you know we should clarify that. Go ahead, Zakri. Thank you, Faizo. So I think that's all from my side. Um. I think uh, tanpa membuang masa, masa yang ditunggu-tunggu juga, here I invite LB to continue on the property, on property punya insights. Um, so, LB, the floor is yours. Hi, everybody. Okay. Um, uh, I'm LB from Research Team. So, uh, basically, I do mainly on research and uh, rental use site. Previously, my working experience is mainly on uh, providing uh, market research report and also consultancy to developers from an MNC. Okay, so uh, this kind of market research may basically is from my I know, uh, basic la, daily life basic. So I'm here today to do and present more to you. So first, we're going to talk about Park 3, which is completed on 2021. Uh, we have total units 739. Uh, the land side of 2.73 acres. So just now, I think Zakri has actually great the facilities and also the facade. We actually will great uh, later on, which we have photos for you to see how the facade. But of course, this facade, you know, it's basically from our own preference. Maybe you have your own preference of facade. You can just, you know, uh, comment down at the chat box, like which you think, you know, this is this facade is the best that you should think, okay, ever ticker should grade it up. Great A facade, you know, okay, because this is all our own preference. Lah. Okay, so for part three, right, for the unit per density is 230, uh, 290 unit, and for like based on acre wise, is 1017 people. So we talk about connectivity to MLT just now, like because connections to the job hotspot, and also, uh, for MMTs like Mall, for Maluri, we have Summit Velocity, Summit Velocity Mall. And also uh, for Cochrane, we have uh, near to it's like My Town and Ikeala. So we have labelled down the distance to all these MRT and also amenities like the mall. So basically, Park Tree is uh, 600 meters to MRT and Maluri, and also 700 meters to Aero Maluri and 900 
50 meter to sunway velocity. So uh, based on price per square foot is around 800 uh, for now. This is based on the current asking. Lah. So re rental per square foot is uh, around 3 ringgit Malaysia. Okay, this gross rental you right is based on a uh, current uh, price that is asking the market. So for part three, the current uh, gross rental is 4.8% and also gross Airbnb U is around 10.81%. So generally, right, uh, most of the developments in uh, the listed down that we have done for the study, they can do uh, like basically like normal whole unit rental and also co-living and some even can do Airbnb study. Even though it's a bit, you know, it's not like really prime like KLCC, but even in Maluri, uh, today's, uh, still a lot of Dalmans start to do Airbnb because, you know, they are near to mall. And also, just now we say about, right, it's just two stations away from TRX. So this is one of the choices people can take on it because uh, it's near to MRT. People can hold MRT and go to TRX. Maybe nearby TRX, the hotel is, or Airbnb is quite expensive. Lah. So this is why this uh, Maluri is one of the options. So when we do Air DNA study is actually a website for us to collect data to do Airbnb study. So basically, when we do the study in this area, we realized that and we found that on the best case occupancy is around 70 to 80%. So it's quite good occupancy. And we will review which um, development has the best uh, Airbnb you. And I will say you will like sort of know why it has the best uh, you, why he has, can get a better price point uh, or higher rate per night on a, uh, which on the next few slides. Lah, okay. So the next one it's is... It's going to uh, surprise you, by the way, guys. Yeah. Right? The, this the, is the Airbnb, a yeah, yeah. The Airbnb data basically surprised me too. Um, and uh, I, I mean, who would have thought, right? So anyway, LB, floor is yours. Continue. Okay. So the next one is uh, M Vertical is completed in 2022. Total units, yeah, everyone says it's a uh, very high dense, a uh, little Hong Kong, you know, uh, you know, five uh, blocks of it, you know, people give a lot of name. Okay, but surprisingly, I wanted to highlight over here, um, this is not the most uh, or the highest dense per acre in the area. You will know which one is the higher dense later on, which I'm going to review to you. Okay, how we actually read like, the density per acres is based on the whole acres and also number of units, how many of people we can accommodate, okay, based on our study. So even though M Vertica looks like it's super high dense, no one wants to stay, but because of uh, the facilities, it has a lot of facilities and the big acres of it, you won't feel like very compact because uh, everything is you know, nicely arranged and it's in a V shape, like, you sort of have more privacy than looking at your nearby blocks, which is just opposite to you in some of my some of the developments. Lah. So M Vertica sort of have a better, I would say, the better uh, kind of like arrangement in the facility, which actually give them a better uh, you know, wipe of living rather than feel like very condensed, you know, very high dense. But surprisingly, it's not the highest uh, density per acre. Lah. Okay, so for M Vertica, uh, distance to MRT is actually to uh, MRT Maluri, is 500 meter. And also uh, on the second exit, actually can go to Taman Pertama punya MRT station. Lah. So distance to mall is 500 meter to Ayo Maluri and 800 meter to Savia Velocity. So for price per square foot, uh, is 600. Uh, 30 ringgit for now. Uh, rental per square foot is 3 ringgit. Uh, gross rental use, this is one of the highest. Yeah, this is actually the highest like, gross rental yield, surprisingly, uh, in the area. And also for Airbnb yield, it's around 14.7%. So on how the rental rate per basis, we're actually going to show in the next few slides uh, on the data we actually collected from uh few uh, website on like property guru, I delay everything to come up with the conclusion on the U rental. We book on my mind, like just simply put a number, you know, just give you, uh, just want to show you that oh, actually M Vertica is the highest, you know, we actually did a study on this uh, to come up with the data on uh, why is it it's the higher use, how much data we have collected and based on the range, what's the average. Okay. 
So next one is actually uh, one concrete. It's completed in 2033, total units 448, uh, land size 3.66 acres. Um, density wise is 122, 122 units per acre. If about like how many people we can accommodate in the area, like in this uh, piece of uh, development is 428 people. So it's not considered very high dense uh, actually because of the total units also quite less. And uh, uh, quite big acres of land. La. So the distance to MRT is actually the nearest is MRT Cochrane. And the uh, nearest is just opposite my town and Ikea. La. Everyone know about this. Okay. So renters per, uh, price per square foot as now is 924. Rental per square foot is 4 ringgit. And gross rental use is 4.7. And Airbnb is around 9.78, close to 10%. Uh, one Cochrane because uh, if anyone has been to one Cochrane, uh, I know... It has a quite big uh, size of room and the view of it is quite nice. Okay. So that's why uh, people prefer in, like rental or to choose to you know, stay in one Cochrane. Okay. Next one, we have uh, Fellow City Residency 2. La. So it's completed in 2018. Uh, total is 334. Uh, land size is actually two acres. It's actually quite small. La. So that's why uh, on facade or facilities point of view, we didn't Grade it at grade A, okay, because uh, actually quite small. And also for now, like you compare it to all these uh, one Cochrane and everything, uh, we at Velocity Resident 2 is uh, considered a bit old yeah, because it's completed in 2018, right? So the distance to MRT, the nearest is uh, one of it is Cochrane, 650 meter. To more, of course, uh, Summit Velocity, ma, just opposite, uh, just sorry, just nearby to it. 150 meter and also uh, 850 meter to Ayo Maluri. La. So on the price per square foot wise, it's actually uh, close to 1,000. Uh, lowest we can see is in the market is actually 950 or uh, 920. But I saw higher sum is even at 1,010, 1,050. But if uh, about transacted wise, because this is uh, quite for uh, has been in the market for quite some time. Uh, so we have actually transacted. I mean, not the developer's transaction. Like we talk about a normal, you know, willing buyer, willing seller transaction data. Uh, it's been around 1,000 to 1,050 per square foot for the willing buyer, willing seller, not included those uh, developer's uh, data. Like. So rental per square foot wise is four ringgit. Uh, I think basically because uh, uh, people like because this is some way that was near to MRT and yeah of course it's the mall lah, making it to be one of the hottest uh developments in the area. Rental U wise uh I guess it's actually just uh as comparable like uh, one co prints is around 4.84 percent uh Airbnb is, uh, is around 10.18 percent okay La Ville completed in 2022, you know, uh, total unit is 1,002, a uh, land size four acres. So basically if you even want to compare to like uh Monica, the unit density is uh, actually not comparable, but the people per acre is 150. Uh, I think Monica just now is around 100 and 1,120. 1, so actually quite near, la, even though it's not the highest, but the total is, is only 1,000 to just now we talk about uh, M vertical is 3,006, right? But uh, actually the density is why for people to accommodate in this development is actually quite similar, even though uh, the total units is actually lesser. La. Okay, so distance to MRT is 550 meter to MRT Maluri. Distance to mall is 300 meter to Same Velo and also 550 meter to Ayo Maluri. So price per square foot is also one of the highest in the areas. Uh, it's around close to 1,000. Rental per square foot is 4 ringgit. And also rental yield is 4.8. Airbnb is around 9.49 to 9.5%. La. Okay, next one, we have our final one, Una. Okay, completed in 2020. Total units is 306. Uh, super, super less dense in the area, right? Okay, land size is less than one acre. Okay, so this is just on a piece, very small land. They built this Una, Maluri. So this is why uh, when we say about the people per acre, Una actually is the highest, you know, uh, around 1,164 people. This is the highest one. So even though it looks like uh, very small, very less than like, people only see, oh, this one, Una, 300 unit. Oh, this is very less than actually. Oh, M vertical is 3,006. Oh, it's a very high that's But 
you know when you do a calculations uh, actually you una when you know people come in to accommodate to it actually it is more higher density than even to m vertica okay so this is how we say uh m vertica even though it looks like it has the most or the highest uh, total units in the area but it's not the highest density lah. okay so distant to mrt the nearest is mrt malui 350 meter distant to mall is uh, somewhere velo is 150, uh, 180 meter and 350 meter to ao malui lah. price per square foot is also one of the highest they are the top uh, highest in the area uh, close to 1000 rental per square foot is just three ringgit even though uh, their price is quite high but the rental is actually not the highest lah. so gross rental use around four 4.2 um, comparing to like one Cochrane or Lavio, everything is like 4.5 and above, but uh, Una uh, is not actually not that high. Okay, gross, even though it's actually quite near to MRT or even to Sunday Velo, but the rental yield is not really comp like not that high compared to like Velocity and also Lavio, everything. So Airbnb wise is just 9.6%. Okay, so this is uh, how we actually rank the fasala, okay, based on our own preference. Maybe you can just text or type in the chat box, like, which one you think is the best. Okay, from our, like, my personal point of view, I think Park 3 is the best. Uh, maybe you give me, like, the vibes of it. I like Park 3 more. Rather than, like, Una Velocity Resident, I feel, uh, for me, like, okay, my point of view, okay, don't get me or, like, you know, this girl has, like, no art one, you know. Okay, my point of view, I feel part three is the best. Lah. The second one is like, uh, for me, like, Una, we, uh, Residence 2, 1, Cochrane, uh, and Vertica, La View is like, so, so, uh, especially La View, okay, from, from like, the visit and things, I feel, can I say, uh, <laughs> don't post it, okay, like, I, I feel like, if, it gives me a feel a bit, uh, you know, like those normal, uh, normal, Normal, uh, 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 affordable Say condo it. near Fasa. <laughs> Say it. Like, like normal, uh, affordable condo near Fasa. Okay, from my point of view, okay, you know, uh, you know the arrangement and things. That's my point of view. Okay, please don't post it. Okay, <laughs> my point of view, lah. So too I bad, from, too bad. Uh, LB already condemned Laville to the ground. You know, La according to Laville. Uh, LB Lavi looked like hey, a low cost that, apartment. Nanti Lavi punya owner akan kecami kot. We're gonna right? post so, on this girl has so, no arts. So, uh, uh, no for me, my personal art. point of view, the worst one is uh, M Vertica. So I agree with the rest. I I, I think that Lavi still beats M Vertica when it comes to facade. So so, but again, you know, um, facade is a subjective thing. Uh, it is a very uh, subjective thing. Actually. Yeah. I think part three is very unique lah from a design point of view, facade point of view. It, it looks outstanding from far. Uh, it looks quite uh, quite quite stand up lah, right? So I don't know about you guys, uh, but but for me, Park Three wins it. Uh, Una different, uh, not to my liking. Uh, but it's different. It's definitely something different. It's stand up lah. V residence one Cochrane La Ville all same so so right. Uh, pretty standard. Uh, pretty okay. Uh, Vertica would probably be uh, the last at least for me lah. Right, so so I don't condemn La Ville to the bottom, right? So 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 uh yeah, uh, that's my POV lah. Ah, uh, continue, continue, Albi. Ah, uh, abik langkau. Oh, owner owner La Ville bakal <laughs> mengecam kau nanti ya. Uh. They will find out where where do you live and what not. Uh. Hantar hit later. Ah, uh, you know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Instead of love, right? I, like just now, got a lot of love. Ah, huh? now they all give me a like thumbs down, thumbs down like this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is my <laughs> personal point of view. Like the facade view. Okay, don't get me. Okay, love you, owner. <laughs> okay, so this is the view from the pool. Uh, okay, from one Cochrane, you can see IKEA, uh, the skyscraper of KL, and Vertica, the unblocked view. You can see uh, Monica World, uh, one one eight, love you, uh. I rank it number three because of the, you know, you saw the block lah, you know, a bit, I find it a bit uh, eyesore lah, a bit blocking, you know, people can see the whole piece, but you know, when I want to take video, then uh, add the video, when I take video, eh, nampak satu tiang dekat sana. <laughs> so for me, okay, uh, La View is number three lah. So uh, V Residency 2 is number four because uh can see other developments and actually quite block lah. Okay, Park 3, 
Number five, uh, last is Una lah. Okay, so that's my personally. I think my... personally for me, I'll park La Ville as number number. I guess number number five code. Una is probably the worst lah because you can't see anything right other than a bunch of bushes right. So, so I don't know what what the developer of Una is doing. Uh, and selling it out close to one thousand per square foot with this view is um, uh, is just um. How do I say this politely? Yeah, uh, without offending people. Nah, fuck it. I'm just gonna say like. The, the the architect should be short lah, right? Should should completely be short lah. You know, uh, what a what a waste of a fantastic location. Lah. I think one Cochrane unblocked view of TRX. I think I agree. Uh, Vertica again unblocked view of the KL skyline is quite outstanding. I'll put uh, V Residence as number third for me. Number four would go for Park Three. Uh, number five would be La Ville. The view is good. But this 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 idea of having a cover and a pool makes it look, uh, you know, uh, number one a little bit of a over over old design, uh, which to me is just very very odd, uh, Because I think pool should be like open, you know. Uh, but you know, I don't know. Maybe people like to 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 swim without being disturbed by the rain. So so like that that could be a selling plus for Laville. You know, you can swim while you know it, it's raining. So maybe they are targeting a bunch of group of people who want to swim during bad weather. I don't know. Right, uh, but uh, you know, I personally I don't like it. I I I think it it makes it look very congested, make it look very small. The beam is not helping at all. So yeah, without the beam, I think still okay. Right. So but Una is the worst. Uh. That one, that one, I think we can agree. Lah. Uh. Apa benda dia buat ni? You beli Una untuk dapat view facilities of M Vertica. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, that's a good one. Oh, the the best selling selling point for 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 Una, you get to see other people's pool. You get to envy other people's pool. Uh, so 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 yeah. Uh, that would be that that would that is actually quite funny. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is our view, lah. Okay. So next one is. Our own stay uh, summary pack uh, we do like on a facade uh, facility spec distance to MRT distance to mall the connectivity and also density per acre so uh, I'm not lying to you um, Una actually has the highest because uh, it's actually built on less than one acre of land even though it has a lesser than a unit but consider on a higher density lah. Uh, for people to stay okay even though Amritika looks like you know little Hong Kong but it's not the highest lah, okay? Um, this is our own stay summary and I'll pass back the floor to our moderator to for our for our point of view lah. Maybe you can interview some of our panelists what's their point of view on if they're going to choose uh, own stay, you know, what, they, what do they like it? Okay? This is a summary from our research team. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think uh, from a density point of view, number of units, uh, uh, LB, uh, 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 which one has got more units? Is it one Cochrane or Una? Um, actually, like uh, the density of people per acres is the Una lah, because it's actually smallest, right? Even though it has actually less unit. One Cochrane is around 428 units, around that. Uh, Una is just 360. But uh, one Cochrane's land is much more bigger. Una is less than one, one acre. Actually, less than one acre is is, is actually very small. So, so here's, the, here's the reason why I asked LB openly here, right? Uh, not to test her market knowledge or anything like that. I, I want you guys to learn this concept whereby, you know, sometimes developer will, will scam you into saying, buy exclusive low-density development. Only 300 units. Obviously, there can only be 300 units because the land is so small. But from a density per acre point of view, it's actually the highest, right? So, so I mean, obviously, when you look at Cochrane prior to coming to this particular webinar or, or this particular content, you would have assumed that automatically, for sure, the highest density is M Vertica, right? I already said in the comment just now, wow, M Vertica, very high density versus what, right? If you are arguing for a number of units point of view, then yes, correct. M Vertica has got the highest number of units. But from a density point of view, it's not accurate to argue that M, uh, M Vertica has got the highest density because it actually loses out to a Una, which actually has got the lowest number of units, you know, versus all of the properties that we are comparing. 
right? So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the next time you see a pitch from a developer, very exclusive, very low density, uh, please check the density per acre as well, right? So that you don't gonna scam lah, uh, easily to go and buy, you know, tiba tiba your USP is someone else's pool, right? So yeah, so 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 that's like, like I said lah. Uh, uh, for us, we're just gonna do a review. Uh, the 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 idea is actually um, you know, to give you some level of sense in terms of, uh, you know, where things are. Now, this is basically our own stay summary. Uh, the facade, obviously, is a, is a, is a, uh, is a personal point of view, uh, right? I, and normally, if you ask the owner of the, of the, of the building in the development, they will all tell you, my building is the nicest facade, right? So, 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 you know, because the owners are going to be quite biased. Huh? So, 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 um, for us, this is, very independent uh, how we look at it. Uh, from a facade point of view, like I said, I think uh, Park Tree is a uh, uh, head above the rest. Uh, one Cochrane uh, V residence, pretty standard. Uh, Una Grade A, I don't know, I think it's just unique. Like, I don't think it's Grade A at all. It's just unique, like, right? Uh, it's, it's, it stands out, right? So you can argue that it stands out, right? Uh, grade C, La Ville, Vertica, I think no, no argument there. From a facilities point of view, uh, one has to uh, accept the fact that uh, M Vertica has got the highest number of facilities. It also has the best facilities, right? Which is why later when you look at the rental, you will find out that despite people are paying 1,000 per square foot, almost 1,000 per square foot to buy Una, to buy La Ville, uh, to buy, uh, you know, uh, one Cochrane, you will find out that M Vertica rental is actually quite comparable to all these other developments that is basically selling about 900 to about 1,000 ringgit per square foot. Funny, right? The, the, the place which is the furthest away from the mall, arguably one of the furthest away from the MRT, arguably the, back, the worst location, right? Arguably the, uh, the, uh, the, the highest density, right? Kena uh, kutuk kau-kau on social media, right? Less center, uh, oleh netizen-netizen, right? Uh, is actually the one which is the most favored by the tenants, right? One of the most favored by the tenants in this area, right? So this is basically own stay summary. Uh, like I said, own stay is basically own stay preference. I think for the next slide, uh, I think we can talk about, uh, you know, uh, panel punya choice. Yeah. So we are on the next slide. Uh, yeah. This is uh, our point of view lah. Right. So, so basically, I think uh, from a own stay point of view, I, I would say the... Uh, the, because we are still looking at it from an investment POV, right? So that's what Far Capital does, right? No matter what. We still try to make money even for own stay property. Okay. Uh, we think Park Tree is uh, very undervalued for two reasons. Number one here is that it's straight, currently transacting at below median uh, of the area. The median of the area is about 890 ringgit per square foot, eh, LV, as of today. Yeah. The average transaction yeah. price point is about 890, right? So yeah, Park Tree yeah. today is trading at below 800. Uh, it has got the nicest facade, uh, arguably one of the nicest facilities too, right? So, so uh, we think Park uh, Park Tree is undervalued. Uh, density wise, it's not too bad. Location wise, it's pretty good. Uh, quality is actually pretty good. Uh, you know, uh, facade looks outstanding. Uh, so, uh, I think from a panel point of view, we we also think that uh, Park Tree is uh, the nicest one for own stay. But obviously, own stay thing is a preference kind of thing. Uh, I think if you are looking for value, I think uh, Park Tree is very hard to argue. But I mean, if you are looking at it from a location POV, then I think uh, the best one would probably be uh, Sunrit, uh, the 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 V series, simply because it's uh, the nearest uh, to to the mall, uh, one of the nearest to the MRT too, right? So so if you like the convenience, then you probably want to go for that 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 side. But if you are arguing the undervalued own stay, we we think it's going to be Park Tree. Um, so next slide, please. And this is basically our our vote uh, for 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 own stay and basically from a tenant punya point of view, which one is uh, the best? So for me, I I go for Park Tree as my number one. Uh, again, even for own stay, uh, uh, I will still want to make money out of the property, right? So for me, I will only buy thing which is available at below median. So 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 my vote will be on Park Tree. Uh, low density, high nicest facility, interesting facade, right? Rental is pretty good too, right? Uh, second will be M Vertica for me. Uh, third one will be one Cochrane, uh, 
uh, because of the proximity to IKEA, uh, MRT, right, and quite low density as well. I mean, own stay lah. For own stay, I also don't want to stay in a very high density. But again, for Envertica, um, you know, uh, I made an exception simply because at the end of the day, from a facilities point of view, it's so the nicest, right? So, so again, uh, I'm the type who uses facilities of the condo a lot. I, I, I like good gym. Uh, I like good pool. I like co-working space, and 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 Monica has got uh, Vertica has basically got the best one. So uh, you look at uh, you know different people has got different preferences. Uh, so I'll be voted Una uh, as a number one choice. Uh, one Cochrane uh, as number two. I also suspect I'll be vote for Una because I think Una has got the nicest toilet uh, for master bedroom. Uh. Uh, so 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 because of that, uh, Putu, uh, I think she so voted. I went Airbnb, ma. Uh, for, yeah, for, I went for... Airbnb. I like ah, it. Ah, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Right. So 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 she stayed in Una. She she quite like it. So literally do research, guys. Sampai duduk kat sana. Ah, bukan don't pray pray ya. Ah, korang nak sembang gembar marah marah. Kita cakap pasal property korang tak bagus. Ah, korang dah pergi duduk property orang lain ke belum? Jangan jadi katak bawah terpuruk. Ha, gitu. Ha, go and stay to other people property then we go and say arguably ha, right make your point factually speaking please right uh, second is one Cochrane I guess uh, you know uh, spec wise quite luxurious very low density third it would be Avetica right yeah uh, again this is for own stay I guess so if you look for own stay here uh, I think uh, there's a commentator that said one Cochrane is the only one selected by everyone because one Cochrane from a location point of view is opposite of a mall nearest to MRT, also one of the lowest density, have got one of the nicest view. So, so from a balanced point of view, money, no object, not talking about rental POV, one Cochrane is actually quite outstanding. Right? One Cochrane is quite outstanding. Right? Um, and uh, Zachary, uh, again, pick one Cochrane, Park 3 and Velocity 2, William pick Velocity 2, Vertica and one Cochrane, and Shin pick one Cochrane first, uh, second is Park 3 and the third is Velocity 2. Right, so this is basically how we vote. So again, there's no such thing. This is own stay, right? Preference point of view. Uh, I think from a tenant point of view, I think it becomes very, very clear later. We're going to talk about it a little bit more. But this is just to give you a guide, lah, right, in terms of this. And I think I think one of the insights that we have, and we're going to show later shortly here, is that I think Una has got the highest rental from a master bedroom point of view, right? Is the only one I think that is asking for about thousand four, thousand five. I personally have not seen the master bedroom of Una, but uh, I suspect it's very appealing for ladies, which is why LB pick Una as a number one pick here, right? And uh, surprisingly, also uh, despite the lack of facilities, uh, Una has got the highest rental from a master bedroom point of view, right? So, 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 so yeah. So that's that, guys, for 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 own stay, right? Uh, that's that for own stay. So, so I guess the the other thing here is that I guess kalau laki laki mana nak beli property tu, uh, jangan bawa your girlfriend pergi datang tengok. Kalau tak nanti tak terpasang pasal tak kena beli una. Ah, uh, the highest density per acre nanti tak pasang pasal right? So again, tips for you guys. So I we don't just give you property tip, we give you life tips, guys. Right? Susah nanti. Ah, uh, hidup. So moving on to the next slide. Right? So. Now we move for 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 investment. Uh, for investment, uh, we use seven criteria, right? Uh, we've got uh seven criteria to guide us in terms of what do we buy for investment, right? So we've got the first one is median, whether you're buying above median or below median. Second thing is the new versus old premium must make sense. Uh, third is that are you buying at the right tier, the right price point? Fourth is that you want to make sure that the supply versus the job being created in the area is sustainable. Number five is booster. Any new story that will come to the area that will help increase property value. Number six is maturity point. When will you actually make money? All right, when you buy this property. And last but not least is the multiple rental option. So this is our guiding criteria, right? When we decide what to buy for investment. Okay, what to buy for investment. Right? So so have everyone watched the seven criteria video before? Or would you like to have access to this content? Entity? Right? Have you guys watched this before or ataupun you haven't? You, you have no clue what seven criteria is. Okay, cool. Uh, don't worry. Uh, towards the end, I think we're going to share you the link so that you can have access to the video. Video is a little bit long. It's about two hours. Uh, but I I, I, I can uh, guarantee you it will be worthwhile watching it. It will help you avoid buying bad property, really. Yeah, Once you understand seven criteria. Okay. 
So from a new versus old point of view, so this is just to highlight, right? So if you're wondering, right, why do we only compare new property here? Uh, because again, there's a battle of new property. Uh, and this is why, for example, uh, Mvertica did so well, right? Did so well because uh, I think Mvertica, there are people who bought it at about 650 ringgit per square foot. There are people who bought 600 ringgit per square foot. And there are people who bought at below 550 ringgit per square foot, right? So if you look at it here, if you, for example, compare it to Amaya, right? Amaya today is already asking 580 ringgit per square foot in subsale price. So when you can buy new property, yeah, guys, with better facilities at a similar price point as per the old property, it's a no-brainer just buy new property. Because why? Your tenant will always, always prefer, provided the spec is better, lah, guys, huh? will always prefer to go and brand new property from you for the same price point. So you look at it here, Amaya, which is already 11 years old, right? Today has got an asking price of about five, 580 ringgit per square foot, right? While you can buy a new property like Amvertica at a price point of 600 ringgit per square foot thereabouts. So, long story short, the new versus old criteria basically says, if you pay less than 20% premium to buy new property, you always want to buy new property. So far, you follow, guys? Farm ke tak farm ni, guys? If the older property is going for 500 ringgit per square foot, you owe, within a 20% premium, you always want to buy new. Okay? So that means at 600 ringgit per square foot and below, you just whack the new property. Because why? No tenant will look at the facilities of Amaya for the same price point of room or same price point for the whole unit and look at the over 30 facilities and Amvertica and say, you know what? I'm going to stay in this old property with old facilities. No way. Your tenant will always want something new for the same price point. So far, faham ke tak? I use this analogy. Brand new car versus old car, similar spec. Okay, you always want to buy a new car, right? Right? So, which is why Amvertica did quite well from a rental point of view. Yeah? Will do quite well from a rental point of view, which is quite evident. Now, when you look at the rental for the whole unit too, the two-bedroom unit in Amaya today is going for about 1,006. The three-bedroom is going for about 2,002. Uh, by the way, for people who are watching, right, all of the rental we quote is based on fully furnished, medium-spec rental. Okay? Every rental that we quote here is fully furnished, medium-spec rental. Not your chokya, 10,000 ringgit, you can furnish the whole room, huh? Uh, it's minimum from Ikea, lah, guys. Uh, so that's the medium spec, right? Right? Not some closed down hotel, you buy second hand furniture and then jump up to your unit. Tabule, right? So every rental value we quote here from an asking price point of view is based on fully furnished medium spec furnished unit, okay? So from Amaya all the way to Envetica, all the way to Una, right? We are talking about those kind of furnishing rate, okay? So now, the old price point in this area is roughly about 500 to about 600 ringgit per square foot. So that's the medium price point for old property here. So again, that's why, for example, M Vertica did quite well today in the rental market because it is asking the same price as per the old property. Yet, it provides so much more facility. All right? It gives so much more from an option point of view. Okay? So again, uh, guys, we show you tadi, okay, uh, go back tadi. I want you guys to remember this, right? Best facilities, right? And facade, right? So there's a reason why we rank it properly, okay? Why we rank it? Because it will actually show up later in your rental yield, right? It's no surprise that the property that we record as having the best facilities and facade do actually quite well in the rental market, right? So if you go to the next slide, okay, you go to the next slide. So again, right, there's a reason why we rank it properly. And I want to show you guys again, uh, M Vertica is one of the furthest away from MRT, is also the furthest away from anymore. It's also one of the highest density. It has also has got the highest number of unit, right? So, 
by all accounts, okay, there's only one good thing going for it, which is the facilities is better than everything else in the area. Alright? So, M Vertica did not have any other advantage other than one thing. It has got the best facilities. Right? It is also the cheapest. So, the only two good things about M Vertica is these two things saja. It's the cheapest. It has got the highest number of facilities, the best level of facilities. Now, if you go to the next slide, you will see it's quite evident. Okay? So, guys, this is the summary. Now, if you look at it, oh, I cannot present here. Okay. If you look at it on your most right column, right? Right most column, how much below median, right? You'll see that M Vertica ranks as the most value for money property in the area at 31% below median. And the median in the area is 890 ringgit per square foot. So I'm talking about median of new property. Average is 890 per square foot. That's the average transacted price point. So far clear? M Vertica is currently trading at about 31% below its median of the area. Okay. Now, the second most value for money, okay, would be Park 3. Okay, at 14.61%. Okay. And the third one, which is one Cochrane, trading at almost 1% below median. Everything else that you see here is trading above the median as of today. Now, Far Capital's principle is very simple. Okay. We want to be the poorest person in a rich man's area. Okay. That has always been our philosophy every time we invest in any area, which is why we are able to outperform in every area that we go to. Okay. We are trying to be the cheapest person in a rich man's area, not become the richest person in a poorest person area. Now, what's the logic behind it? If you are the poorest person, number one, you buy below market. Number two, your rental, even if it's the lowest in the market, okay, you can still get break even rent. Number three, in the event of an economic downturn, people are not going to move from Malawi to go and suddenly stay in Kajang out of sudden. People rarely do that. But people don't mind downgrading, let's say, for example, the most expensive property under record here, if you look at it here, is basically one Cochrane, which fetches 4,008 for the largest unit, and V Residency that fetches 4,003 for its largest unit. Okay? So, these two has got the highest rental. Now, if you're currently staying in one Cochrane or V Residence, and economy is not so good, and you have to downgrade, and you can basically find a cheaper option. And today, the cheapest option you can find, if you are talking about a two-bedroom today, is going to be your Park Trees and your M Vertica, which is why we like to be the cheapest person in the rich man's area. We can cater for downgrader. Economy doing well, we're going to do quite okay. We cater to the poorest person in the area. But in the event economy don't do so well, you're going to have market or downgrader looking to downgrade in the same area. And therefore, they can stay in our property. So far, you guys understand huh? why we like to buy below median. We don't like to overpay. Right? We want to buy median and below. Only. Okay? Because why? Economy good, you're going to do quite well like today. Economy not good, you own the cheapest property there. So, you are going to be quite okay too. Okay? Now, for example... People argue, right? Wow, too high density, too high competition for M Vertica, right? But after now almost two years uh, of VP, right? Almost two years of VP, rental hasn't really gone down despite the more than 3,000 units, okay? Asking prices have actually gone up in the sub -sale market because rental is actually quite strong. Again, for two reasons. Number one here is that if you look at Vertica, 
the two USP here is, uh, is catering for the cheapest, lowest budget people in the area, either from buying or renting. And number two, it also has got the nicest facility. Now, it's a very different story if M Vertica did not have a good set of facilities. Right? So the number of rental year that you can see today will be a lot lower. Okay? So I can safely say today, right, of all the properties that you see here, right, the conclusion here is that this is talking about a regular rental, eh? rental long-term, one-year rental, whole unit rental, not co-living and any of that, right? So just regular rental. The only property that will give you break-even rent today of all the six will be M Vertica saja, which is you get above 6% rental yield. Okay? Everything else that you see here is going to be negative cash flow. Right? It will be negative cash flow. Right? So I see people commenting here. Marah lah tu. Because he got rented, he, he was able to rent out his three bedroom M Vertica for 2009 and our rate here, kita letak berapa sini? Ah, tengok LB letak 2,650. So again, we have to use average lah guys. So we don't want to inflate the number. Sorry. Right? So we take an average, right? So we use an average. So again, some of you might complain. Eh, hey, ini tipu ni. I ran out my lovely unit for 20% higher. Yalah, you are the only one. one. But the average, right? Looking at the average, right? That would be the average here. I can't use exception as a way to justify, right? Why Laville or Una makes sense. So we have to take average, right? So if you look at it here, uh, the one with the worst rental yield as of today is Una, right? Uh, second worst would be as of today is one Cochrane based on today's asking price of close to 900 ringgit per square foot. Uh, the third worst would be Laville. Uh, the fourth, uh, La Ville together with Park Tree is on Thai, right? Uh, and the best performing one by far is actually M Vertica, right? The cheapest, the highest density gives you the best yield as of today. So obviously things can be very different one year, two years from now. But as of June 2024, M Vertica has got the best yield. Okay? So... If you were to rank as of today, the one below median is M Vertica as number one, Park Tree number two, one Cochrane as number three. If you are talking about yield, M Vertica is number one, Park Tree is number two, V Residency is number three. And if you are talking about per square foot point of view, which one is the cheapest in the area as of today? M Vertica is number one, Park Tree is number two, one Cochrane is number three. So again, this is just data. So I'm sorry if you have bought over expensive property and your property isn't portrayed in good light today. But like I said, data is data. Lah. Uh, I got no preferences. I share you what the data is as of today. Okay. Now, if you look at the seven criteria tadi, uh, if you could go, go back to the seven criteria slide tadi, I'll be. Okay. The last one is this thing called rental strategy, right? So guys, one of the criteria that we use to determine if the property is going to be safe to purchase, right? Is that how many rental options that this property would have in order for you to get minimum break-even rental? So multiple rental options. So senang cerita, you have a lot of rental strategy, right? You got short stay, you got medium term stay, you got long stay, you got whole unit rental, you got a per billet, right? Uh, you can even rent per head if you want to. If you want to cram 20 Bangladeshis, you can. That's per head rental, right? So the question here is that, a good property would have at least two rental strategy that will go to break even, right? A good property must have minimum two rental strategy that will allow you to go and get break even rental. So far, far, my guess. So if you are looking to buy a good property, number one, you have to make sure price point is correct. Lah. How do you get to the right price point? You can believe bawah for the median. You can make sure that you don't overpay of new versus old. You must make sure that you don't overpay in the tier. You must make sure that the supply is not going to be too many. Booster ada. Maturity point, you're going to make money immediately. And last but not least, is that what happens after you buy the property? How many rental strategy that can give you break-even rent? Now, guys, 
the worst property you can buy uh, this is a power tip eh, for those who are watching the worst property you can buy is the property whereby the agent or developer tell you rent per day you do airbnb you're gonna get two thousand ringgit per month monthly cash flow if you see a developer agent sell this and only this as a way to break even you run far far got it guys right because every resort genting property port dixon property malacca property that is losing money cow cow so today are all being sold on a daily rental projection okay i see something similar today happening in klcc right all the agents in klcc today selling klcc property they cannot justify long-term rental right so how do they sell it they put rental per day betul ke tak betul guys right so for me these are property to avoid major red flag okay major red flag so again if you see any agent or developer looking to sell a property and they use daily rental as a way to justify you buying this property to show you're going to get cash flow from daily rental you want to run far far okay because you need to have minimum two rental strategy that can get you to break even then you are safe because if that one doesn't work at least got another plan b that can work does that make sense guys so the more plan you have in terms of getting to break even rentals the better but yeah faham guys now go back just now to the mro if you look at it here there's an average rental that we have basically done so you can basically screenshot this is a very powerful data and again this is data collected may june 2024 if you are watching this maybe in 2026 and then you want to go on bamboo me and lb and the rest of my team alama jilaka you guys misrepresent hello you are two years too late of watching this content okay this is as of today okay this is what the average room rental rate in part three Alamanda, Vertica, Una, Laville, Juan Cochrane, and Velocity, Residency 2. Okay? So this is average room rental because the first, just now, the one that we show, okay, based on the rental yield, based on regular one-year tenancy rental. Okay? Now we add two more. Okay? We add two more. Right? Which is, if you do room rental co-living, how will it perform? Okay? And the third one is that you do Airbnb. So, I will cut short, right? Summary for you. Easy for you to make a decision. On Airbnb, all this property looks good. All this property can be positive cash flow. So again, right? Like I said, right? On Airbnb, daily rental point of view. And today, based on the data from AirDNA, which is a software that basically can track occupancy rate uh, in an area, which we pay quite a fair bit of money uh, to have access to, Average occupancy rate in this area is about 70%. So on 70%, your yield here will be minimum 9.5. So the worst performing one here is Laville, followed by Una. These are the only two below 10%. Okay, the only two below 10%. So I suspect why is it the worst performing? Simply because from a facility point of view, these two are actually quite average. Location cannot beat V residency. Right or one concrete, right? So you got a very average facility, not the best of location. It's shown properly even in your Airbnb rental, okay? And to my surprise, the best performing Airbnb is not V residency, but it's actually M Vertica. Okay, for two simple reasons. Number one here, I I suspect number one, right? And it's not cheap, huh, by the way. You are talking about average per night of 300 to 360 ringgit. It's already one of the highest in the area. Funny, right? Right? A non-exclusive development has got the highest Airbnb rental for two reasons. Number one, from a layout point of view, M Vertica can accommodate up to 8 to 10 packs. The four bedroom can properly sleep in 8 to 10 packs. Okay? There are some going to be some Yahudi guy who probably convert, right? The living room to also become bedroom. So now can accommodate 10 packs. So it's the only one in the area that can actually cram 10 people somewhat comfortably. So if you look at the 
price per pack murah lah guys 360 ringgit bahagi dengan 10 orang is 36 ringgit per person murah tak right and he has got the best facilities okay so again this is shocking to me too so obviously because the price point is the lowest at just 600 ringgit per square foot tapi dia punya rental mahal nak mampus therefore the yield becomes close to 15% unbelievable right people are making a killing buying and vertical okay so the second best one today on Airbnb yield is basically part 3 the third best one is basically one Cochrane, right? Now, despite the rate cannot beat V residency, you just have to understand V residency is about 1,000 ringgit per square foot. Park 3 is about 700. One Cochrane is about 900. So because of its lower entry price, therefore the yield becomes higher, right? Cost collection tolak dengan bahagi dengan your purchase price. That's how you get average Airbnb yield. Okay? Now, from a room rental point of view, Okay, from a room rental point of view, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, LB, there's only two developments saja that will give you break-even rental in this area on room rental. Okay, which is Park 3 and M Vertica. Okay, there's only two developments saja. If you bought co-living room rental kat Una Maluri, it'll be negative cash flow. If you do it in Laville, it'll be negative cash flow. If you put it, put it in one Cochrane, it'll be negative cash flow. If you put it in Velocity Residency 2, it will also be negative cash flow. Okay? Ah, so in the meantime, since we are talking about room rental and Airbnb, I want to bring our, our two other panelists, which is Shane. Right? Shane is the head for Vitopia, And they do room rental in part three. Right, uh, and uh, uh, Keith uh, representing Belief, uh, they do room rental basically almost everywhere lah. Uh, in this area uh, for 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 far capital clients, we've only got part three, and we've only got uh, uh, M Vertica for room rental. So can we please bring Keith and uh, Shane to come over and share their point of view as well? Okay, Shane, I'm gonna start with you, right? Okay. Because you. You have uh, Park 3. Uh, mm. Keith has got uh, inventory in uh, M Vertica, correct? Right? Yes. Uh, uh, Shane, what's the highest, uh, uh, as of today, what's the occupancy rate in Park 3? Okay. So, currently, in terms of uh, occupancy rate under our performance, I will say, uh, I think we go with a little bit. Lah. As of current, it's around 83%. Uh, but we, if we look into 2023 and also quarter one of 2024, it has been a stable amount of around 90% occupancy rate, 91 to be exact. So that is the occupancy rate for part three, even though there are rumors saying that with the numbers of volume uh, in the area might affect in terms of the occupancy rate, but that is not uh, what affected towards uh, the rooms under us. Lah. Uh, under the Vitopia. And when it comes to the layout type, it comes to for all, I would say, all size. Lah. Okay. It's not certain types or no. All are the facing in terms of the average occupancy rate. So in terms of the renter, it's actually doing quite good uh, to the point that it is more than average uh, renter that uh, what we are renting right now. For example, like master bedroom at part three, we are renting around 1,275. You know, even though the rent is really, really high, but Master bedroom is actually one of the highest selling. It is 100% occupancy rate, meaning that people are willing to rent out the rooms. And for media room, it's around 950, which is uh, the highest when it comes to the media room. As for the small room, it's a little bit lower, which is around 700. But still, in what, terms what, of... So, so why, why, why would people rent so high to stay in a master bedroom in Park 3? I mean, if you can enlighten us a little bit, simply because, you know, at 1,002... Uh, this is the price point of Una or La Ville or even Velocity 2. Right? Mm. So 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 what's so special about the master bedroom in Park 3 to the point appear 1,270? Okay. Alright. So first of all, we need to understand uh, why they choose Park 3 at the first place. And we need to look in terms of the majority of tenants under us who choose to stay at part three. So just to give you a little bit of context, we gather all the data when it comes to prospect and also tenant-wise. 
So we get it in terms of their income, what is their age and everything and so on. And one thing that we realize, a lot of people who are willing to rent out higher renters are Gen Z. And actually when it comes to room renter, across all of our tenants and so on, Gen Z is the new trends when it comes to room renter and especially when it comes to co-living. So one thing, if you look tap into the way how Gen Z thinks is that they're really, really important in terms of the quality of life. So, and also in terms of how they, what we call that, the, 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 the way how they live their life, you know, want to show that, okay, I have a quite good life, especially when in, the, in terms of the social media uh, world right now. So, so you are saying it's very Insta- Instagrammable lah. Part three, yeah, right. So part three okay. cannot deny. I think in terms of facilities wise, I think part three owns one of the best. And also again, in terms of the design wise, it is one of the best within the area. To the point that if you, if you let's say lah, as someone from Gen Z himself, see someone who posts the, the place they are staying at part three, they will say, oh, this guy really, really doing good in life lah. Uh, so those are the things oh. when it comes to psychology. So... This is a, something that we need to tap when it comes to mass market way of thinking. So the way how we do it is by looking into uh, the generation uh, age gap. Lah. So, so Shen, last question here. I think there's there's a question from King here. Uh, hmm. We are talking about a 90% occupancy rate. What is the current number of rooms being managed under Vitopia at Park 3? Okay. So currently at Park 3 is around... Let me get the exact data again. Uh, it's around... 105 rooms under at part three mm-hmm. so king you're talking about 100 rooms uh average occupancy rate above 90 percent last year uh and last quarter now it's about 83 percent uh, and largely mm-hmm. because we have got a uh, quite a fair bit of tenant that moved out uh but i think uh, we are now on 83 percent already so pretty decent sample size not not 10 bilik uh, 10 bilik then 8 bilik tenant third then you can claim 80 percent 100 rooms significant uh. Okay, so thank you, Shane. Uh, we move on to Keith. So Keith, you are running Believe. Uh, I think uh, M Vertica yep. is one of your main, uh, uh, I, I would say, development that you guys manage. Can you share a little bit? I think before someone asks you, I'm just going to ask you. Lah, how many rooms are you guys managing as of today? Uh, in M Vertica right now, we are managing about 160 rooms and we still have another around 80 to 100 rooms coming in as well. Uh, in the next couple of months, uh, yeah okay that's your talking about your future pipeline right what's your yeah. average occupancy rate as of now in the last two to three months okay uh it, no just just not last two three months just it, it has always been 80 over percent and as of the last friday that was updated by my team and all of them are so excited because uh we have hit one of the one of the really record breaking for our Vertica occupancy which is really 95 percent oh wow okay so 95% occupancy rate. Uh, out of curiosity, yeah, Keith, did you yeah. manage any of the units here beyond beyond uh, M Vertica? Do you have anything in Una or La Ville or Velocity or One Cochrane? Uh, no, I only run M Vertica over here. I see. Kenapa? You tak suka juga the other development juga ke? Kenapa? <laughs> Okay, um let, 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 let me put it this way. Um when, when we enter when when we decide to enter the Maori area, right, definitely we are looking at the opportunity. Where where are we able to really look at the best condo? When I define how do I how do we define the best condo is in terms of the numbers of units we're able to get to manage. And secondly, it's definitely the facility and the accessibility to the public transport. Got so, it. So it's a key thing for you. Right, yeah. so obviously from a facility point of view, Ambedika has got the best by far, um, and it's not even funny, right? Uh, and I, and I think I think okay, so so there's a reason why I ask you, right, guys? Uh, again, if you want to buy property that has got multiple rental option, go to where the operators are. Does that make sense? You know, if you guys are watching this, right? Guys, pernah ke tak pernah, guys? If you want to do room rental on your own, do you think it's easy or do you think it's not so easy? Right? So, you know already, right? If you do room rental, you're definitely going to get more compared to you do long-term rental one single tenant. Ngamo? Right? It's very inconvenient to manage. If you have got an operator, two things. Number one, the operator would have already have some sense in terms of what is going to be the best performing. 
So they will be able to go and tell you how to renovate. They'll be able to go and tell you what kind of rate that you're going to get. And you're going to be able to go backward calculate. But by the way or not, I spent 50000 to go renovate the place to get this kind of rental. Betul tak? If you don't have an operator, you literally teka, teka, teka saja tau. And the fact that the operators are not in the rest of the building can tell you two things. Number one, you have a very tough GMB, right, in other building, right? So, so I, I guess lah, you can argue that, you can argue that, uh, you know, Una, Laville, One, Cochrane, Velocity, these are all quite atas owners, atas people, right? So high-end. Rich people. Rich people don't mind losing money. 1,000, 2,000 cash flow per month. They don't care. Right? Us must market poor guys. Huh? We care. Negative 500 is a big problem for us, right? So so therefore, like I said, lah, for me, very simple. Uh, I think there's a Chinese that uh, saying that basically say, if you don't have a big head, don't wear a big hat. Kalau kepala kau tak besar, janganlah pakai topi yang besar. Uh, so, 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 so for me, I am very simple. I am very sedar diri. God, we want to buy the cheapest uh, to lower our risk. And today, having an operator, um, room rental operator being present in the development will also tell you a couple of things. Number one, there's already a market for room rental. Number two, you can take data from them and then you can decide whether room rental worth it or not. What's the rental year better or not? Okay. And last but not least, you also get to see how difficult MC or your JMB is going to be. Right? Because typically operators, room rental operators don't operate in areas whereby uh, owners are quite stuck up lah, basically. Right? Everything has to be high end, juggle some level of security. There's nothing wrong with people doing that. But I think from an investor point of view, we tend to want to maximize ROI. Okay? Keith, Out of curiosity, do you do any 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 unit management in places like RC, Radak City, or Trios? Uh, yes. yes, we do. In both or one residency, right? Uh, we we have in RC and we have in Trion. Uh, can you share a little bit about the occupancy rate over there and the rental rate? Is it better compared to uh, Maluri compared to uh, Cochrane? For Okay, I, I don't know how many I, I don't know how many RC residents owners will be here, uh. But in fact, we're actually trying to match it back, uh, with M Vertica pricing, and we can't honestly. And and in fact, we actually lower down to at least twenty five to thirty percent compared to M Vertica for room rental per se. What's yeah. the main common complaint, Keith? Why people the, don't want to stay in RC? So, I mean, the fact that you have to lower down the rent, right? Because yes. it was supposed to be a comparable development. Right? RC mm. versus Amitika was always been, oh, to Hong Kong, to Hong Kong, to Hong Kong. You know, netizen lah, every time macam tu. Right? So, 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 but why, why Amitika can fetch 35% higher rental compared to RC? What's, okay, what's, let's, what let's, is the insight from you? Uh, okay, as, as simple as the moment, if you go to our Raza City residence, uh, Like what I say, let's like say when it comes to co-living room rentals, people are, your tenants are looking at the accessibility to the public transport. And that is almost none except bus. Uh, where bus is not the preferred traveling method in Malaysia per se. So, and then getting car parks is also, uh, also a, a, a difficult things in, in, in that area as well. So basically due to, due to really, uh, we can't really get, like few more, I would say positive points to really sell the place, uh, and not to and not to forget uh, the the facility. I'm sorry, I, I want to say sorry to all the Raza City residents and even for the owners that I'm managing right now. Let's say if really compared to the facility, RC sucks. Uh. There you go. Think the, yeah. So so two things uh, access to public transportation koya facility so koya lah despite the higher density. Uh. Yes. Right, so if I were to summarize, how many units are you guys managing in RC as of today? Uh, in RC, we are managing about 80 rooms. 80 rooms, ah. what's your occupancy rate? About 50. 50. 50% yeah. only? 50% only. So, dengar betul-betul lah guys, this is why I said, even when Bandar Malaysia begin, I suspect people will actually move to Maluri area exactly because of this insight. Okay, that you just hear from Keith, right? That at the end of the day, public transportation tak ada, 
is nearby industrial area so that means shops and whatnot memang non-existent lah kedai pun mall memang tak payah cerita lah right and facilities is just not up to par so despite it's just opposite of bandar Malaysia okay does not mean that the rental is going to be great now last question is about try on for slightly better much better facilities right so facility was superb lah for try on right so so pretty decent views uh, uh I, I would say pretty good views right because i think the views are quite unblocked uh, yes. facilities should be quite cantik juga should be top tier uh what is the rental rate like is it comparable to uh one cochrane is it comparable to velocity residence or we are talking about m vertical level je? uh also the same with m vertical so you are saying try on Despite the higher per square foot, today rental roughly about same as per M vertical only. Yes. Okay. Occupancy rate. Occupancy rate is also not 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 really very promising. It's about like sixty over percent. Okay. So so again, uh, guys, uh, I think you hear it from the operators themselves. Okay. Um. If you are talking about doing room rental, access to public transportation, access to commercial like shops, malls and whatnot, and last but not least, facilities are going to be the key role determining whether you're going to have tenants or don't have tenants. Okay? Whether you like it or not, like I said, the, the Maluri and Cochrane area is far more mature, far more livable compared to the Chan Sao Lin, Sungai Besi side, which I think will take another easily 7 to 10 years to mature. Alright? 7 to 10 years to mature. So, which is why, like I said, I think with, uh, even with Bandar Malaysia building and there, you know, the Chan Sao side is supposed to be nearer, uh, the Sungai Besi side is supposed to be nearer, I still think, from a tenant preference point of view, alright, people will still prefer to stay in Cochrane, Maluri side. The fact that when I look at Tryon's uh, advertising uh, advertisement today, majority of the key selling point is three kilometers to Sunway Velocity and three kilometers to IKEA. It sounds funny to me, lah, right? So for the same price point, I think you'd be better off just looking at the Maluri Cochrane area, which has got a little bit more upside as of today. It's quite proven from a rental point of view. Uh, people are willing to pay a certain level of premium already renting in today in this area okay so guys do you guys understand the importance of having multiple rental option right because if you don't have multiple rental option the agents will just sell you do airbnb because on airbnb all of this property makes sense does that make sense guys all of this property looks good on airbnb every single one will give you positive cash flow okay on paper lah, right but what if it doesn't work what if occupancy rate drop to 50%? Therefore, this property becomes negative cash flow, which is why you want to have minimum one more other rental option, which is today, like I said, you look at long-term rental, you look at multiple, uh, you look at room rental and co-living rental, right? So today, I think Belief has got one of the best uh, performing, you know, co-living room rental brand out there, and they specialize in Namvertika. So I think kudos, uh, congratulations to Keith. 95% occupancy rate with Topia. I think the slightly more premium version of this, uh, being able to go and do average 90% occupancy rate in the last couple of months uh, after a bunch of people move out, it's still about 83% as of today. Okay. So guys, remember, if you are looking to buy into a property, especially for investment, try to look for property whereby you got room rental operator already operating. They will help you do homework for you. Betul tak? Tak payah susah-susah korang nak buat research tu. Right? So, they will be able to go and justify to you why you should buy here. Okay? They are only going to be there if rental makes sense. If rental doesn't make sense, rental koyak, they also cannot be there. Right? If tenant don't want to be there, you know, people also don't want to be there. Uh, and of course, before we wrap up, uh, from a summary point of view, uh, I want to call up William, right, uh, to share his perspective. From an agent point of view, what does he think? Right? What does he think about uh, demand, uh, especially for people who are looking to buy something for own stay, uh, people who are looking to buy something for uh, re tenant renting in the area? Uh, if you can give us a little bit of your take, William, on this. 
Yeah, so far so. I mean, uh, I think actually quite similar from uh for the operator operator perspective, right? Uh, as an ex ex agent, right? Uh, we of course looking for those that are easier to sell, right? When we, either we are looking for sell or rent is about the same, lah, right? If it's easier, then most of the agents will go there right? because it's you know faster to get money, all that stuff. So in this case, right? If you guys remember, uh, um, you know the the facade, the facilities. That actually plays quite an important role uh, when we share to our clients, right? So in this case, you can understand why Empathica, right, despite the number of units, with its um, really, really unique kind of facilities, right, um, it, it still demands a higher uh, you know, number of agents going there to sell or rent. Uh, right? I mean, if you've been to the site, you look at, you know, there's just agents walking around uh, all the time. Right? I've been to all the projects here, probably except the Alamanda, right? Uh, it's just you know, more agents there because of the market itself, right? Either for rent or for sale. So I think that's a quick summary for me, Faisal. Hmm. So, so one of the indicator here is that I guess is that uh, how many agents operating in the unit in the area, lah, right? Will, yeah. will basically give you some level of heat map, lah, some level of interest. Lah. Because guys, I mean, let, let's be very honest, right? Agents want to do the job. They're not Doraemon. Right, they cannot magically pull off, you know, tricks out of the hat to go and sell lousy property on your behalf at sky high price point, right? So, so the agent is there to close a deal, right? And anything that they can close fast will be something that they prefer. Definitely right? correct. So, yeah. So, 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 so again, guys, which is why remember I always say, what is my rule buying into an area? Do I want to be the most premium unit owner or I buy the cheapest unit? Which one? I go for the cheapest, right? Because at the end of the day, you like it or not, the lowest value unit is also the easiest one to move. If all else is the same, the cheapest one is easiest to move compared to the most expensive one. Okay? So guys, do you guys learn anything new or not from this particular sharing? I think we spent quite a fair bit of time already, right? On this particular slide, right? But I hope you understand buying property is not a joke right it's not a joke you need to use number you need to use you need to accurately uh predict what is going to be the demand like and like i said you can talk to agents you can talk to operators to actually assess demand so today you've got all these wonderful people who are going to be very happy to provide you those feedbacks okay so please do your homework do your research okay before you buy anything cool okay so summary next please all right so this is basically the map all right this is basically the map right we've highlighted it just now right so if you are talking about the gross rental yield right Highest gross rental yield, highest Airbnb yield, also the one which is the lowest below median, the winner is M Vertica. Okay, it's M Vertica. The second property, right, will be Park Tree, right, which has got the 15% uh, below median, highest gross rental yield as of today on a long term rental, right, on a room rental point of view also is also has gotten the highest rent one of the highest rental yield at above seven percent okay while la ville while v residency one cochrane una doesn't really make much sense when it comes to room rental so your long-term rental yield is all about below five percent okay so the clear winner right the clear winner will be M Vertica from an investment POV. Lah. So this again, ah, the last portion is really talking about investment. So so investment, there's no such thing as a personal preference. Numbers is numbers. Ah. You either make money or you lose money. There's no such thing as a preference unless you prefer to lose money. Right? So from a numbers point of view, like I said, gross rental yield, room rental yield, Airbnb rental yield, M Vertica is hands down the best performing property in the area. Okay, followed by part three, 
And the third one basically is a toss between V residency and one Cochrane, right? In certain categories, one Cochrane wins it. In certain categories, V residency wins it. Okay. Next slide, please. So again, like I said, this is basically the summary, right? This is a summary uh, uh, in the area, right? Price per square foot, cheapest is uh, M Vertica, followed by Park 3, third is one Cochrane. Uh, below median is again M Vertica, Park 3, one Cochrane. Gross rental yield, uh, M Vertica, Park 3, uh, Velocity 2 is the uh, third one. And gross Airbnb yield, again, is M Vertica, Park 3, this one Cochrane. I think the one thing that we didn't put here is that the gross room rental, right? Which uh, I suspect uh, will look somewhat similar. Uh, M Vertica, Park 3, and the third one, I, I'm also not sure. I think the third one will most likely be Velocity 2, right? So from a room rental deal, right? So that's how we use data. Uh, we use numbers to basically see which is going to be the best performing property. But again, we are referring simply to the current asking prices of people who are looking to sell versus the current asking prices of people who are looking to rent out. Okay, so you can always argue, but these are asking prices of both selling and 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 and, and rental. You can argue that, um, but there's no real data to be honest as of today when it comes to actually transacted uh, rental unit. Therefore, it makes it difficult. So we have to do an estimation based on that, right? Average asking price versus average rental unit. So again, we apologize if you are an owner of any of this property in the area whereby your rental is higher, fine. But we have to look at the average. So from the average, it becomes very clear. Because you see, if you are talking about individual units, right? You have to, have to understand the average and vertical buyer pay roughly about 500, about 600 ringgit per square foot. There are some buyers who bought it at 530 ringgit per square foot, right? The average Park 3 buyer, all right, bought it at roughly about 650 to 700 ringgit per square foot. And there are some group that actually buy this at 550 per square foot. And the average one Cochrane buyer, for example, you know, buy this at about 850 ringgit per square foot. While we know that grew of buyers that actually bought this at just 700 ringgit per square foot. And again, there are going to be some operators who can get 100% occupancy rate of room rental because I know for Park 3, the highest rental recorded today, room rental point of view, is 5,600. Betul, Gashin? Is that the highest for Park 3? Highest is actually 5,900. So, you look at it, right? 5,900 is the highest recorded room rental today in Park 3. And the highest recorded rental rate for, for, for Envertica today is how much? Keith? 4,008, right? If I recall correctly. Yes. Yes. 4,008. So again, uh, we can't use the highest as a base to go and say this is the best. Uh, does that make sense, guys? So we have to use the average. And there'll be people who's going to get lower than the average. And there's going to be people who's going to get higher than the average, which is why we have the average. Right? So I hope uh, this sharing has been useful to you. Right? Has been very useful to you. We'll give you a guide in terms of what you want to do if you are owning a unit here, right? What is the rental strategy that you can deploy, especially if you are owner in Envertica or your owner of Park 3, your owner of Velocity, your owner of Wanko Crane. Lah. Uh, the rest of them punya owner tu, you boleh tengok yang sakit hati je lah kot. Uh, tak ada banyak kelebihan uh, untuk tengok webinar ni. Baik, jangan tengok lah. Korang sakit hati je kot. Right? So, but, uh, you know, for, for the rest of the gang, boleh tengok lah, right? Um, so, 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 uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed the sharing uh, for tonight. Uh, like I said, we try to be as transparent as possible. Uh, we actually bring resource speakers, real data to just highlight. Lah. And these are all operators who are currently operating, not Chirita Pasal Theory, right? So again, there will be anecdotal evidence of people, you know, coming from, no, oh, my unit got rent for 4,000. Yeah, yeah, sure. But there's also a unit in one Cochrane also renting for 5,000. But one unit. So we can't use that number, right? Does that make sense, guys? So I hope you understand uh, why we have to use average, right? So next slide, please. Okay. Now, uh, 
I also have to, uh, uh, like I said, from a summary point of view, uh, for, for, for today's sharing, we think the Maluri Cochrane area is outperforming the Chan Saolin and Sungai Besi area. Okay? Right? Sungai Besi area. Right? Um, so uh, we've already highlighted why. Uh, as of today, the data is very clear from the operators, right? And on the median area per square foot, as of today of 890, only M Vertica and Park 3 are clearly available at below median, right? M Vertica is the only one today that can give you break-even rental at above 6% gross yields, right? Uh, M Vertica today is the only one that can give you positive cash flow on three different rental strategy so from an investment point of view and vertica at price point today of just 600 ringgit per square foot is the clear winner now obviously this become different if one day and vertica becomes 750 to 800 ringgit per square foot uh which is not a too far-fetched thing simply because well if the other property with similar rental can ask 800 ringgit per square foot why cannot and vertica ask the same amount right because Again, at the end of the day, from a rental point of view, it's similar. Okay. So this is a summary for investment. Again, own stay, I think we've already highlighted uh, what is our preference. And I think, you know, from that, I think it becomes very clear. Uh, we hope you enjoy uh, tonight's session. Next slide, please. Uh, I do have a disclaimer to make too. Right. Uh, and, um, okay. Full disclaimer here. Next slide, please. Okay. I don't know whether you guys know uh, what the FAR Capital does, right? Um, uh, we do bulk purchase, right? We do bulk purchase, right? Um, again, thanks to our seven criteria, we are able to identify, right? Okay. Uh, we are able to identify what property in the area to buy at what price point. Okay. What property to buy in the area and what price point. Uh, and again, uh, we don't buy at market price point. We don't buy at your regular price point from developer. We tend to buy bulk purchase price point. So I think uh, you'd be shocked to know that for, for Park 3, we actually paid below 600 ringgit per square foot, actually below 580 ringgit per square foot. So guys, while the average owner on Park 3 gets a 4.8% rental yield, uh, our clients get above 5% because we buy the lower price point. And while other owners get roughly about 10% gross Airbnb rental yield at about 11%, uh, we have about 11% because we buy lower. And while other owners today, uh, other buyer today buying at about 30, uh, you know, at 700 plus ringgit per square foot, we buy below 580 ringgit per square foot. Therefore, we're actually buying at about 38% below median. In fact, our price per square foot is very similar to how much we are getting M Vertica to. All right. So from an M vertical point of view, our price point is not too far away from the public, except that we have quite a fair bit, 30,000 to 40,000 ringgit worth of additional renovation given to us for free because we buy about 200 units the Gatsini, right? So we get about uh, 50 to 60,000 ringgit in your price advantage, number one. Number two, we also don't have to pay interest during construction because we only buy after it was completed. So for part three, you buy nearly completed uh, M vertical Right, uh, we actually buy after it was completed. Kita dah lampak dah tengok university because I was the person who kecam M Vertica. So, guys, ni, muka yang kecam M Vertica waktu orang korang tengah beli waktu 2016-2017. Right? Because at that point of time, Masing doesn't have a track record of building high-density development with nice facilities. I changed my mind the moment the property is completed. We look at the facilities and we decided, holy cow! This property, even though super high density, Orang Kaya Kecam has got the nicest facility by far in this area. And we think, okay, and we think that it will outperform everyone else. And so far, after one year of going into Amvertica, because we went right before VP, betul-betul sebelum dapat kunci, kita masuk. Right, so we entered quite a fair bit. Uh, our clients get to buy roughly about, about, uh, about 70,000 punya price difference lah. Ada multi free, ada furniture extra, additional maximum discount, close to about 25%. Right? So, that's the price point that we buy and because we buy a lot, which we need, kita dapat a completely different price point compared to public lah. Right? So, so uh, like I said, we are not saying all these three is the best because we bought it. Tidak. Even at today's price point, these three are the top performer. At today's price point, at our price point, it becomes even clearer lah because for one Cochrane, kita orang beli at 700 ringgit per square foot je guys. Right? 
is opposite of IKEA, right? It's opposite of MRT, and we pay seven hundred ringgit per square foot sahaja. Okay, so today our clients are getting positive. Uh, the rental yield is above six percent, ah, even on regular rental, Airbnb dapat dua belas point lima percent. So again, the reason why I want to share this is because, guys, if you buy low enough, okay, if you buy cheap enough, you buy low enough, right? You have major unfair advantage, right? Our price point for Park Tree One Cochrane is more than one hundred thousand cheaper compared to public. For Invertica, it's about fifty to sixty thousand cheaper. Okay, so this is just fully disclosure, lah, kan? Takut nanti kau orang jumpa orang. Oh, dua orang memang lah akan cerita macam tu sebab they bought the property. Look again, is the data right? Is the data? Data is very clear. All the data that we show you earlier are actually data from today's asking price and today's renter, not our price out. Our price is much better. So obviously, you can see here, you know, for M Vertica rental yield is greater. You no, know, our Airbnb rental yield is almost sixteen percent versus fourteen percent for the public because we buy cheaper. So far, far, my guys. So if you buy cheap enough, you buy the lowest price point, you will always be safe. You always have an unfair advantage. Okay, please remember this. And how do you make sure that you buy the right price point? Use seven criteria to guide you. Make sure you buy below median. Yeah, uh, and obviously, if you buy banyak macam kita, then you are gonna be able to go and buy at a massive discount. Okay, fine, my guys. So, I've got an offer for you, right? Uh, don't worry. We're not asking you to pay for anything. This is a free thing. Uh, first and foremost, did you guys learn anything new? Do you guys enjoy the the the, the sharing today? The data that we presented. The guide that we have presented, right? Now, if you do, would you like some more? Would you like us to continue to go do this, guys? Right? Okay. If you do, ah, uh, we're gonna upload this nanti dekat YouTube. Okay. Nanti bagi tahu dekat ruangan komen dekat YouTube tu, what area that you want us to go and review? So, I think ada orang tadi tanya, right? Eh, can you please do undercon review juga? So, unfortunately, this area tidak ada new undercon. So, that's why we don't put it in. Kalau ada, kita dah letak dah. Uh, there will be one lah, basically, V3, right? So, V3, roughly about 900 ringgit per square foot. So, you already know dah, right? So, V3 punya performance tu will not beat, for example, one Cochrane ke, will not beat uh, M Vertica ke, will not beat Park Tree. Alright? Okay? So, nanti bagi tahu dekat kita, right? Uh, which area that you want us to go and review. Right, and then after that, the area that is the most popular, ah, uh, will most likely be the one that we're gonna do next, ah, yeah, will be the one that we're gonna do next. Now, in the meantime, okay, next slide, please. Okay. Ah, uh, in the meantime, right, um, please scan the QR code, right? Please scan the QR code, right? Please scan the QR code if you want to. Uh, number one. Uh, join our shortlist, right? So, what do you, what benefit you are gonna get? Number one here is that you're gonna have access to the several criteria video. Uh, so, ni tak bayar tau guys, free je. You guys just register je, you akan dapat access to the seven criteria video. Eh, number one. Number two here is that you're gonna get notification eh, for all our upcoming webinars and area comparison so that you never miss anything live, right? If you learn something new today from this content. Then you definitely want to sign up lah for this. Huh? Again, it's free, yeah. And then the third advantage, which is going to be a massive one here, is that I remember kita ada paying clients who join to buy property macam kita tujuh tadi tu buy a hundred thousand cheaper, hundred fifty thousand cheaper. Now we might have additional inventory that we can release to public to you guys who tak bayar ni, but it will be at a higher price point lah. It will be like maybe five percent higher. It will be still cheap, cheaper compared to public. If for example, developer jual lapan ratus ribu, client beli mungkin enam ratus lima puluh ribu, you kena beli pada harga tujuh ratus ribu. It is still cheaper compared to you to buy from the developer. More expensive from the client. Ah, you tak bayar kan? Free group kan? Ah, but it will still be cheaper. So this is for free, right? Please scan the QR code. Um, and apa tu? And 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 get notified in all our upcoming deals. All our upcoming webinar, much of me, so that you can basically learn more. And again, these are all for free, right? So, 
with that, I, I will basically end my presentation tonight dan I think we can move uh, to Q&A kalau kita ada soalan. Ada soalan ke? Ada FR. Ada dalam 10 soalan. Boleh ya? Eh? Boleh, 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 boleh. Okay, so the first question is from Mr. Irfan. Hello FR. What about Sungai Besi and Chan Saolin properties? What do you think of the properties there and its prospects? I think I dah jawab tadi, Keith pun dah share juga kan. Um, if you look at RC today, uh, occupancy rate not very good. Rental is about 25-30% cheaper compared to Ambertika uh, because area is not mature. It's industrial area, public transportation tak ada, commercial pun tak best. Facility teruk, right? So 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 what is better is Tryon, right? So, so Tryon is better location, uh, slightly better accessibility, a lot better facilities. Tetapi, despite being more expensive compared to Envertica, dulu jual Envertica enam ratus ringgit per square foot. I think Tryon average is about, I think about seven eighty to about eight hundred ringgit per square foot. Uh, the rental is sama je macam Envertica, right? So we maintain our view that uh, even with Bandar Malaysia coming up nanti, I think majority of the tenant punya focus tu yang kerja kat Bandar Malaysia tu will still prefer Maluri Cochrane area compared to your Chan Saolin Sungai Besi, right? I think we covered quite extensively lah. Alright. Yeah. By the way, thank you for asking the first question. Alright. <laughs> okay. Next one is for Mr. Hazik. What do you think of the impact of Bandar Malaysia to this Maluri or Cochrane area? Um, I think it will be quite positive. Uh, it, it will actually be very positive. Uh, I've maintained my view that um, when Bandar Malaysia officially announced right with HSR eh, Bandar Malaysia saja tak cukup it has to be Bandar Malaysia plus HSR officially announced Malaysia will officially enter a property buran ok now kenapa is because um, the HSR will now make us comparable to Singapore right Singapore already entered property buran guys for those who do not know right Singapore has already entered property bull run right property values have gone up about 30 to 40 percent the last two years rental has gone up about 60 to 70 percent the last two years three years okay so singapore and third property bull run so singapore becoming very expensive so hsr will give access to two set of new property buyers number one international buyer who are too poor to buy singapore but no problem buying malaysia okay so that's set of Buyer number one lah, your Taiwanese, your Hong Ki especially, right? Japanese, apa semua tu will begin to look at Malaysia as a serious, serious option. Okay. Uh, number two, Singaporeans themselves, right? Singaporean themselves will be looking because it's too expensive to retire in Singapore. So Malaysia with HSR becomes a proper option because it's only one and a half hour away from home. Right, so so I think HSR uh, will be the catalyst eh, for the next property boom, run. and I suspect HSR will be announced in the next ninety to hundred and twenty days. Right, so I think I covered the 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 uh, Ziyong's question too in the Q and A. Uh, what is the possibility of HSR right being revived? So HSR plus Bandar Malaysia will trigger the next property boom run for Malaysia. All right. Okay. So the next one. I heard the rumors that you guys bought into Laville and Sunway at 900 per square feet. Is that true? Tidak. <laughs> right. So 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 uh we've already disclosed just now that uh we only buy in that area we only buy three properties. Uh we bought uh Amvertica at uh, an average of below 550 ringgit per square foot. We bought part three, roughly about 550 ringgit per square foot. And then we bought one Cochrane about 700 ringgit per square foot. Right, so we didn't buy La Ville. Uh, the, the, I mean, to be honest, all these developers come to us, lah, right? They do, right? So so, so all of the developer who has property here all came to Far Capital asking us to buy. But, uh, you know, I think I offered Sunway like 700 ringgit per square foot and they told me to fly kite. Uh, I've offered Laville, I think either 550 or 600 ringgit per square foot. They also tell me to fly kite. 
because you know i kan yahudi malaysia so 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 uh, and again right at the right price point we buy anything at the wrong price point we don't buy anything so so for us we are firm believer in that lah. We want to make sure that the property that we buy multiple dua option of rental yang boleh dapat break even so the entry price is very important entry price decide whether you're going to get positive cash flow or negative cash flow right so we didn't buy into laville we've negotiated yes uh, sanwe also invited us in fact sanwe also invited us for uh, v3 uh, and we have declined uh, for now simply because i know they cannot give me the uh, price per square foot that i wanted which is below 800 ringgit per square foot and and uh, there's also another developer that's actually approach far capital to help consult building a property nearby this area juga right nak dengar gosip ke about this new property nak tahu ke nak tahu ke nak kena spill tea ke tapi ni gosip lah guys ni 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 planning ni planning right so uh, like i said uh, there's this developer who has actually approached us it will be one of the lowest density development uh, in this area lowest density development in this area uh, it will be below 700 units uh, it will also be the first property in the area that has got a rooftop pool right uh, and the entry price i guess we're hoping to get below 500 ringgit ringgit padu ke tak padu guys below 500000 So it will officially be the cheapest property in the area. So every time cheap, I want, I like. I told them I will land block the whole. Tu lah, tak payah jual kat public lah. So 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 guys, if you register for this list, okay. Park Capital Client obviously have got the first bite. If ada saki baki, if you register in this list, uh, you might be able to go and get the unit again at a slightly higher price point, right? So so we are quite excited. So which is why we we declined the offer from Sunway. Uh, and uh, because we want to focus on 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 that, so one of the things that we do at Far Capital today, uh, for those who do not know, uh, developers are coming to us because we've got thirty thousand clients, right, members, and we're the largest buyer in the country. So developers are coming to us to design product that basically suits our criteria and our clients. So there's a bunch of project today which is currently designed purely for Far Capital clients. Right, so the most exciting one for me will be uh, next to LRT station, bawah pada dua ratus ribu ringgit ada rooftop pool. Best kita guys, guys. Right, so uh, you know uh, if you end up becoming a client, you have unfair advantage of buying such property. You already know how much cheaper that we buy, even in area macam ni. Uh, but uh, again, long story short, uh, did we buy? Uh, La Ville, do we buy Sambi? No, we don't. And that's the reason why we don't buy. We buy cheap, right? We buy the cheapest. We made offer. It was rejected because, you know, we are a, a little bit asshole, but I don't care. Uh, my job is not to cite the developer to make, you know, my, my job is to make sure clients buy at the right price point and they can make money. Okay, so please register. The list is free. If it's enough to become a client, even better. All right. Okay. So, I did got a few questions about how to become a client or buy this deal, right? So, what you do is just register this link. We'll definitely going to update you on the newsletter and as well as do join our next Sunday sessions on how to buy seed property and we'll explain to you briefly how to become a client, okay? So, guys, if you register, if you register, ni, next next week, kita akan ada uh, a session. That one is really to introduce you guys what benefit you're going to get from becoming a client. Mm-hmm. Right, so 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 just register, then you can come for the next weekend mini version. So tonight, I don't intend to sell anything. Uh, my intention is really to educate. To Jeff. All right. Okay. The next one is from Mr. Jeff. Out of curiosity, Fr, if I were to join as a client today, oh, dah ditanya dah. <laughs> can I buy properties that is ready completed and can give me cash back of minimum? 100k and still give me positive cash flow yes right uh both part three both uh and vertical last time uh meets those requirement so not only our client didn't pay a single cent to buy those property they dapat 100,000 cash back because we buy at above 20 over percent discount 
And if you can look at the rental today, based on the room rental rate, people are getting positive cash flow, right? So I don't know whether you guys listening tadi tak? Uh, part three highest rental. I mean, our client buy seven hundred plus thousand, but highest rental is today five thousand eight. So cover positive cash flow. Dah tolak 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 semua. Operator fee pun semua tu stay positive cash flow, right? Uh, and vertical pun sama juga, right? And vertical pun sama juga. Uh, one Cochrane, the cashback was even greater than 100,000. It was more than 200,000. So the answer to your question, is there a property that will give you positive cash flow today, 100,000 cashback, and property to the SEP today, uh, if you become a FACAP client, the answer is yes, I do. So you can buy completed property, tidak ada risk of delay or abandoned. Okay? You can buy tanpa modal, you can get 100,000 cashback, and it can still be positive cash flow. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So the next question is from Mr. Abdul. I follow your webinar in 2020 and you claim that a property bull run is going to happen. It's already 2024 and still signs yet. Laugh out loud. When will you admit that you are wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 like, I like good yeah, questions. Yeah. Um, number one, I think... Uh, uh, Guys, uh, if you follow my webinar since 2020, I, I did say a bull run will happen, but I did give you a timeline of 2020-2021 is a downturn, right? Recession. 2022-2023 is recovery. 2024 will be the beginning of the bull run. So if you look at the data and the transaction from the peak of 2023, last year was the third highest number of transactions in the history of Malaysia, right? And from a property value point of view, it was the highest, right? So from a science point of view, the science of the property bull run, we are well on track. So 2024 should be the beginning of the next property bull run, right? Uh, right now, kita dah nampak dia punya bibit-bibit. So just look at the data from Napik and you can disagree with me all you want. But rental hasn't gone down, property prices hasn't really gone down. So everything has been on the up. And there are two things, all right, that will now trigger uh, this next property bull run, right? And it will be a fast and furious one. Number one here is that, like I said, high-speed rail in Bandar Malaysia. So this is the main key me mega project. PM Anwar has to get it right, right? And if we get it right, okay, our economy will grow quite significantly in the next couple of years, okay? Number two, it will certainly trigger a property bull run because now, Okay, the interest towards Malaysia property is no longer from local sahaja. Okay, it will be an international interest. We become an international playground immediately the moment HSR is announced. And one of our senior clients, and dah jadi client pada tahun ni, is a very, a C-suite member of Bandar Malaysia. So, it's a 99% done already guys HSR ni. So, tunggu nak announce sahaja. Right? Uh, I don't know whether you are aware, the new Prime Minister of Singapore was in Malaysia this week to discuss exactly this. So, uh, PM Lawrence of Singapore just got sworn in as the Prime Minister of Singapore. His first country to visit was Malaysia. Not other country, not US. Malaysia was the first. Okay, so I think uh, you will hear good news about HSR coming soon in the next 90 to uh, 120 days. So very, very excited for me. Number two here is that because of the removal of diesel punya subsidy, starting from this uh, month, right? Um, you also expect a spike of uh, increase in the cost to construct a property. So far, so new properties, uh, guys, moving forward, will become a lot more expensive compared to today. Right? So, yeah. Those two uh, will be the trigger. Lah. I mean, the interest and data is already very clear. Lah. Last year was the third highest. Eh? In the last 30 tahun, last year was the third highest transaction. Highest value of transaction. Third highest number of transactions. Hmm. Highest in the last 10 years. So so if that's not a bull run near data, I don't know what is. So um I hope you do something lah, uh instead of just uh commenting. Uh you know, if you have followed me uh Peto, I mean can we pata balik pergi slide tadi? Okay, just look at it. Yeah, just look at the slide. I mean, if you followed this in 2020 and you bought one cochlear at 700 ringgit per square foot, today you look at the average asking price is almost 900. You have made money. You have made more than 100,000, bro. 
right? If you have bought Park Tree at 550 per square foot in 2021, follow us, right, properly, right? You would have made close to about 100,000 too of gains, right? So, you know, data is data. So we're not saying this because, you know, uh, it's fun to predict certain things. The reason, the reason we're quite accurate in predicting certain things because I bukannya ahli nujur mother bola kelapa tu guys. I just use data. I study data more than anyone else in the in the country. That's why we are able to predict certain things that will happen. We predicted Johor will book, right? Even when the market was locked down and closed down and, and people were thinking that we are crazy. But we are buying Johor, nearby CIQ at 400 ringgit per square foot. Yeah? 400 ringgit per square foot je. Right? Today, how much is it? 600 pun, developer tak mahu jual. They want to see. They want to keep. Right? So again, those who have followed advice, I, I believe would have been in a much better position today uh, compared to three years ago. So then again, it's up to you. Uh, I, I, I cannot convince everyone. I can only share with you the facts and data. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> the next question is from Zan. What is your thought? If the unit kena tambah partition baru dapat positive cash flow, then you actually buy the house in the wrong net price. Um, I I I don't agree. Uh, you know, with with that statement. Um, if you have to tambah partition to get a positive cash flow, so I mean, do it lah. Why not? If it's allowable, right? So, for example, Selangor today is still allowed, right? Uh, uh, Johor today is still allowed. KL has got a ban, but there are still people who are doing it quietly, right? Um, so, so, so that's one. Uh, number two, for example, I give you a real example, right? Uh, during pandemic, there was a lockdown, right? So there was a lockdown, a and with lockdown, there's no foreigner, right? So you've got zero expect looking to rent, right? So we've got property in Monkiara, we've got property in Bangsa South, and this property are struggling because there's no expect and locals nak bayar harga very, very low. So at that point of time, one of the things that we did, we advised clients to tambah bilik, right? Tambah bilik. And that allowed them to basically get to break even rental. So today, lockdown was lifted, market dah kembali, expect dah masuk and apa semua tu. So today, regular unit rental one whole year tak payah buat room rental is higher than co-living. So, just because you can't get positive cash flow without doing partition the first couple of years doesn't mean it's a bad property. Sometimes, it's just, you know, you have a free once every 50 years kind of like occasion. Right? So, every tier one property at that point of time was suffering. So, from TRX to KLCC, you know, people are renting KLCC studio units. Ha? Boleh jalan kaki pergi Petronas Twin Towers, seribu setengah je guys. 1,005 je waktu tu. For one year rental. Today, 3,000 setengah. So, you as a property owner, you do what it takes, right? In whatever market, in order to survive and thrive. Right? So, like I said, in that example, you do partition for two to three years before the market recovers balik. And then after that, what's market recover? Voila, rental dah naik. So, sometimes, for example, it can also be Sekarang ni MRT tak siap lagi, tak jalan lagi. Mall tak siap lagi, tak jalan lagi. Office tak buka lagi. So therefore, rental quite low. Right? But, two years later, right? Two years later, MRT siap. Rental be very different. Pre-MRT and post-MRT, rental be very different. So what's wrong with you doing partition today to get a higher rental so that you don't get negative cash flow and once MRT dah siap, then voila. Even without the partition pun, you can still get positive cash flow. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, obviously, right, obviously, uh, you can't do this again. Huh? Just because you can tap a partition doesn't mean you can do it. You should do it. You try to do it in, for example, places like Kundang ke, Kak Rawang ke, you pergi tambah bilik kan. It's, it's not going to move lah because there's just not enough, you know, talent supply to go do that. Right? But in markets like Johor as of today, right, full unit rental doing very well, you tambah partition, you make even more. So sometimes it's about timing, right? So for example, Johor, before border buka, wow, the rental was half. Today, rental is crazy, guys. Rental went up by 50% just two years. 
So at that point of time, yes, we have to do partition in order to go break even. And today, because of the partition, we get 1,000 per month positive cash flow. Right? So for me, if it's an investment grade property, there's nothing wrong with you doing a partition first in order to survive and break even. Because we're talking about practical advice here, right? Before waiting for the property potential to be fully materialized. I see no problem. I see no harm. I see no shame in doing so. We are trying to make money. And we are trying to make honest money. We are not trying to screw anyone ke apa benda semua tu. And because of partition juga, you can actually make your room rental to become cheaper. So why not? The young people get access to good location, safe, good new rooms at a cheaper price point. Sebab you ada tambah satu ataupun duit. Okay, I say it very differently. All right. Okay. Now, the next one is from King Lee. Do you have average lead time to rent out the property through data points with your operators? Example, lead time between time property is marketed versus deal and property marketed versus tenant moving in. Would love to know it. Um, uh, King, it's a phenomenal question. Unfortunately, it, it it really depends on multiple variable factors, right? So, 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 uh, so I give you an example, right? Because it's really subject to the number of units available at that point of time. I give you an example, right? We've got unit at Sepak. So, you know, Sepak, right? Sepak, you know, quite sendu and whatnot, right? But in two weeks, we had 11 tenants that moved into the unit. So basically, two or three units get it to be fully tenanted in just a week, right? But if you have three units, you can claim that, oh, my unit fully tenanted one week, brother. Ah, right? Because you got only three units. What happens if you have 30 units? What happens if you have 100 rooms? Right? So at that point of time, when you have 100 rooms, it's going to take two to three months before the full supply can be absorbed. So I'd love to go and tell you, we do have units that were fully tenanted within a week. Yeah, I have some clients here who is able to do it within a couple of days. Really? But it's also subject to what is the available supply at that point of time? What is the timing right, of your unit become available? For example, if your unit become available during bulan puasa, Ramadan month, oh man, it's going to be so slow. But if your unit is available December, January, whereby people move jobs, people ship locations and whatnot, unit is going to move quite fast. Okay? So, I don't want to give you the cock and bull story, King. I apologize. I'm not the type of guy who's going to give you, you know, the, the dream, the sky and the moon. Yeah, just because I have a couple of units that was fully tenanted within seven days, I'm going to tell you a seven-day lead time just to get you to sign on as a client. I'm not going to do it now. So, I'm just telling you the reality. Sometimes it depends on luck whereby your unit is available at what point of time and how many competition do you have at that point of time? How many tenants looking at at that point of time? Right? But just to give you a sense, uh, Vitopia in general on a monthly basis, last month did about 200 move in. So not 200 inquiries, uh, 200 people move in. So Vitopia, for example, we do about 1,000 inquiries per month. Right? 1,000 inquiries per month. Uh, we do about 400, 500 viewings per month. And we do 200 average move-ins in the last 12 months. So it's quite substantial. But across the board, lah, multiple developments, not single development. Okay. So there are going to be some clients who come and complain to you, maybe, oh, Vitopia took three months to rent out my unit. And there are going to be some clients who come and say, hey, they took one week. So again, that number really depends luck lah, and the number of unit and the competition at the point of time. So I apologize. I, I I don't have a beautiful story to tell you and guarantee you, but I would rather tell you the truth. Right? Because that's what we're doing today, right? Tell it as it is. All right. By the way, we still have more than 100 people in the webinar. I believe in live also, we have a couple of more. Hey, yeah, guys, damn. it's already 1 o'clock. <laughs> korang, korang tak ada kerja ke besok? Uh, lupa pula besok, yeah, mak tak kerja pun kan? Uh, but, uh, respect guys, respect. respect yeah, you yeah, know, because, yeah. because, you know, bila cerita pasal, you know, you're not saying beautiful the dancing and apa semua tu kan? And, and you know, this is a pretty boring webinar. Uh, like I said, this is only for serious people and very happy uh, 
right? We've got about 160 people that pick today we, at, at, at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. And today, uh, right now, we still have about, well, more than 130 people. Yeah, so you guys are right. awesome, right? And I hope it was worth your time. More importantly, that's true. Right, to spend the last three hours with us, I hope it was worth your time. Yeah. Okay. Now, last question for tonight. Uh, I think you're going to... Gonna... <laughs> But just gonna cover it anyway. So this is from Mr. Amar. So FR Part Three and One Cool Crane still available. Yeah. In each reader, One Cool Crane was twenty twenty punya deal, right? Uh, Part Three was twenty twenty one punya deal. Uh, Vertica was twenty twenty three punya deal. Right. So so, tada. Ah, uh, to answer your question, tada. But like I said, uh, that's what we do. Developer come to us with deals. So if you want to buy the best possible property, you want to buy future deals similar to Park Tree, uh, similar to One Cochrane, uh, do you know? Do do join us uh, this coming Sunday, and then do explore to become a client. And there's a comment I think from Uzai, is there an opportunity to join uh, my team as an investor? Well, just sign up to become a client. Simple. That's right. 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 So so and today the price point to become a client is the cheapest that it has ever been. But unfortunately, we don't open at any point of time. Uh, kita buka the discounted price only every Sunday. Bila kita buat that webinar tu. So, do come. Uh, apa tu? I I'm just going to give you lah. Uh, bagi tu, set set, guys. Uh, normal price to become a client, 6,000. If you datang on Sunday, 1,000 setengah. So, wow. you nak datang. You, you nak awal, awal. Ah, uh, I bagi tahu je malah lah nak 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 na, tu kan, <laughs> nak buang masa kan. So if you think enam ribu tu okay, never mind, just sign up tonight, right? So you can give them the link today, right? They can sign up first motor, oh, right? Yeah, uh, and if you want to do the one thousand five, you have to come next Sunday. Fair, guess. Aku bagi tahu saya siap. Ah, malah nak sembang sembang, malah nak tiap apa tu. So just bagi tahu terus je. So <laughs> you have to decide lah, pay one thousand five to become a client with it or not to buy something at the fifty hundred thousand additional discount. Right. So. Okay, I think that's the last question for tonight. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for still staying in the webinar. So before we end this session, do you have any last word to say? Maybe I'm gonna beam up the rest of the team over here. Thank you so much, panelists, for coming tonight and give your insights and data. Uh, any last word, Fr, before we end this session? Uh, I I see I see a comment. Uh, you know, from a from a from a, a far capital client. I'm a one Cochrane owner, thanks to hey. Far Capital. Uh, but he, he, here's the thing, right? Um, when they were buying one Cochrane, they didn't know one Cochrane is going to be such an outstanding deal. Betul lah, Ma. You don't even know. It looks like an okay deal at that point of time. Today, it looks outstanding lah. Right? After after a couple of years. But that's just what property is lah. Right? When you use data, you can identify those opportunities up front. Right? So, so, so um, first and foremost, uh, thank you so much, guys, for staying all the way until almost one o'clock, right? Uh, almost one o'clock. Uh, I hope it was worth your time. I hope you learned something new. Uh, I hope we've we've um we've we've uh share with you how we look at property. How do we ensure that people, when they buy property, uh, you know, you get your risk covered, lah, right? Uh, and today, uh, you know, it's the first time uh, we did this area battle. Uh, and and I think even if you don't know about Cochrane today, I think you will know more than the Cochrane area after watching this content compared to most agents out there, right, who just have one or two listings at Cochrane. Really, right, you will know more about multiple developments from just watching this uh, one hour to hour winner. And that was my my hope when we started doing this. Uh, second, I apologize for any shortcomings. Uh, it's our first webinar after all. Uh, I think we should be better on the second one. Uh, uh, please follow our YouTube channel. Uh, is it under Far Capital or Faisal Rizwan? Okay. Our YouTube channel. Uh, please follow, follow my YouTube channel uh, for for the version of this. So, by you can see the the recorded version number one. Uh, number two, you also get to comment which area yang you guys want us to go do next. Ah, uh, we are hoping to be able to go do two areas every month. Uh, so so two areas every month. Um, and uh, betul. Uh, two areas every month because I don't think we can do one every every, every week because it's too time constraining right it's too time constraining uh to go do research on just one area as you can see from our uh, research it's actually quite detailed uh bukan bukan simple simple je right um and 
last but not least, uh, I think uh, if you are looking at Cochrane area, I think you already know which one is undervalued, which one is overvalued. And like I said, uh, and for those who sign up to become part of our list, uh, most likely uh, we'll have access to our upcoming deals in the area, whereby we are looking to go and buy something in this area for less than 500,000. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be the first property kat sana yang ada rooftop pool. Hopefully, boleh nampak KLCC, guys. Right? So, yeah. I mean, we're going to buy the, uh, you know, <laughs> we're going to buy the next best one in the area lah. So, with that, Assalamualaikum again for all fathers out there. Uh, betul, happy Father's Day. Uh, and uh, for everyone celebrating it tomorrow, uh, uh, sama hari korban. Assalamualaikum. Good evening. And have a good week ahead, everyone. Bye, guys. All right. Assalamualaikum, everyone, and good night. Bye-bye.